Hey, what is going on, everyone? It is David Palmer, Leo King, and Rich Lop here for the Awakening Experience. Today, we'll be doing the one card that I think everybody looks at, maybe the most or wants to avoid, the Three of Swords. What's going on, Rich? Good to be here with you, brother. Yeah, man. What's up? What's up? I've been waiting on this card, honestly. I mean, obviously, if you look at it, it doesn't look too friendly. Normally, for me... Uh, very, very simple go-to. This is usually a third-party situation for me, the way I read. Um, of course, it doesn't have to be, uh, but uh, I think the most general meaning that you can give this, if you look at it, you know, we got three swords stuck in a heart. So, obviously, it's heartache, heartbreak. Um, but typically, I normally, if well, with a personal reading, if, if I have a personal client, it's usually a third party. Like if somebody comes to me and says, you know, did this person cheat on me? And the three of swords came in. I'm saying, yeah, probably more than likely. Is this person cheating on me? You know, the three of swords comes out. Kind of like how we talked about with the three of cups. Very frequently, I'll kind of, of say that that indicates a third energy. If there was one, the way I read, that indicates a third party, I think it's the three of swords. Is that, is that the way you look at it? I mean, yeah, I would definitely, I, I feel like it's anything that, especially, I mean, third party is a good way to look at it, but it's, it's everything that I feel like one, it's kind of like we already know because our mind is cutting our heart off. I feel like that's the main part of the card. So it's like mm. we become attached to things. It's like addiction to me. It's like, mm. you know, it's like, it's like not, not, not a, not a weird thing when somebody's like, oh, they cheated on me. It's like, you already knew. Yeah, You were addicted to the mind wanting to have the curiosity be fulfilled. Yeah. Like the expectation. Like, I feel like it's like, I hear more people always talk about like, you know, I always get this fucking shit out of the stick mm -hmm. with this person, or this is always what I get, or, oh my God, this person's a narcissist. I always attract the narcissists, <laughs> right? Like, you know, whatever it might be, it's like, well, are you coming from your heart or is your mind shattering that heart all the time like it reminds me also of like if it would be a third party situation i mean i would just say it's like well you already knew because they were hanging out with that friend of yours more than you yeah like that's a fact so, so sometimes you know sometimes i think it's the most beautiful card because it's like finally the facts can shatter the heart that's disbelieving things like creating its own weird like Oh my God. Like, yeah, they're hanging out with my best friend all the time, but no, it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's cool. No, yeah. They stopped making love to me like a month ago. Yeah. But they're really happy when they come home after <laughs> seeing my friend. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh oh, <laughs> very, and very frequently, you know, looking back whenever you find yourself in a situation like that, of course, you know, you always want to reflect on the red flags after it's over, you know? Yeah. And most of the time you think back, you can feel it whenever you see your partner over there texting away at their phone, you know, and you say, who's that? Yeah. And they say, oh, this is, this is my, my uncle. <laughs> it, it punches you in the gut. You feel it. It's like, no, it ain't. That ain't your fucking uncle. You don't say nothing, you know, but then you try to talk yourself out of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's your uncle. My uncle Hunter Biden. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, okay. I'm sure that, that that's your mom. That's your uncle. You, you try to, you, you talk yourself out of what you already know, which, yeah. you know, I, I, I tell my clients all the time that, you know, that feeling that you get whenever you're dealing with somebody that you don't really know if you can trust, that's the biggest red flag. Yeah. Because that feeling won't be there when you're, when you're around somebody that you can really genuinely trust that that feeling isn't there. This, this feeling that's hiding down in there, you can feel it on an energetic level when somebody's bullshitting you and then you talk yourself out of it and instead of wanting to face the facts and, and whatnot, and then it always ends up coming back and hurting you in the end, you know? Yeah, it's shattering the illusion, which I feel like that's the part of the awakening experience. So actually I look at this card not so bad. Like I always look like, oh, it's like the, the minor pain for the better outcome. It's really minor. It's like every illusion that we have, whether it's especially in love, that's where everybody goes to first. It's like when you're being a little bitch whip dude trying to get the chick and they don't want anything to do with you 
And then you finally see them out and you've already tried everything and you, you're, you're, you're at this point, just the biggest simp you've ever been. Yeah. that's what I was And gonna then say. you go out and then you see them making out with three dudes at the club, like shattered your illusion finally. And so yeah. people need that. I feel like that's what the universe will do to finally be like, I guess you just didn't want to pay attention. You know, some people just don't want to pay attention to the truth. I feel like it's like the truth bomb card to me. Like I look at it as like, Hey, here's, here's the truth. And it might shatter your heart, but actually is it shattering your heart or is it shattering your fake heart? Like the heart that's been disillusioned, the heart that doesn't want to look at the spiritual truth. It's like all those people that fell for that twin flame fucking universe thing. I just oh, watched yeah. that. I just showed you clips of it. I know you haven't watched it, yeah. but and, and that's where it's kind of like, after watching that Netflix show, and I did show you where they were like telling people to convert sexes yeah. because there's more girls in the spiritual community. So they only had a couple dudes. So they were like, well, we promised them. <laughs> we promised them that we were going to have them find their twin flame. Little did they know we were just going to pick a bunch of chicks in the group that felt masculine and be like, you're a divine masculine. Go get a fucking bottom surgery or top surgery. Man, that's horrifying. I mean, fucking like, that's three sword shit. <laughs> like... You should have known the dude was calling himself the reincarnation of fucking Christ. That's horrifying, dude. Like that's <laughs> that like I said, that twin flame universe shit. That's fucking Marshall Applewhite 2023. I can't I I couldn't believe that. You know, you hear stories like that from back in the the nineties and and who's who was the other dude? Uh David Koresh. Yes, you know, and, yeah. and Waco, Texas. Yeah, you hear you hear stories like that, and it just you, you, I never would have thought in a million years that something like that would would resurface in in 2023. But that is every bit of a fucking cult where, you know, it's 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 no different than Marshall Applewhite getting everybody to drink poison. I know. Now they're Some Kool-Aid. Yeah. And, and they cool twill and twin flame Kool-Aid. Yeah, bro. And these, these people, it's just so crazy that they take advantage of these people who are at the lowest <laughs> depths of emptiness and codependency that they are willing to do the, the fucking transgender thing, which I'm not shitting on transgenders. Yeah. If, if that's, it's, if that's what you want to do. They're forced into it though. Yeah, that's just crazy. Somebody telling you, it's, it's one thing uh, now I, it's one thing if you say you know what i really feel like another gender not not that i agree that that's the right approach you should take with it but if, if that's how you feel okay that's who you are but for somebody to tell you oh you're you're divine masculine you need to change your gender and they fucking do it when they they, they it never occurred to them they didn't feel like the wrong gender <laughs> just some Fucking Marshall Applewhite 2023 motherfucker says, you're a divine masculine. You need to cut your tits off. And they do it. What the uh, fuck? That's I, horrifying. I, that's, that, that's why I think the three of swords, it has some sort of attachment. So it's like they promised that if they took their program, that they will find their twin flame. Yeah. So like, that's a pretty big promise. And again, that's such a three of swords moment, right? Like you're, you're going in already, not paying attention to, Nobody can promise you your twin flame. Yeah. Okay. So then you're in there and you stay there for so long that now it gets to where he starts saying, uh, only through me will I know it's your twin flame. Like it got to the place in one of the parts of the show where this one chick is in there and he's like, well, did you get a text message over the last couple of days? She's like, yeah, it happened to be a guy in the group. Hmm. And he goes, that's your twin flame. <laughs> I was like, whoa. And then she ends up with him and he fucking is schizophrenic bipolar with a criminal record like fucking losing his mind and 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 she's having to force herself to be like that's a reflection of you though that's what he kept saying like that's a reflection mm. of you and this whole twin flame thing so to me the whole three of swords twin flame thing mm, yeah I, I, you know like and the way that people have taken it and i noticed i've you know i follow a couple twin flame channels and stuff they all had to put out which is another three of swords thing right like um, that's not us. Yeah. Um, that's not how we believe. I think it was a, a big truth bomb about that. This community can go way fucking off the rails. It's about self-empowerment and helping people that their connection to the divine is through themselves. It's not through some person. Yeah. It's not through some fucking guru. That's fucking, I wouldn't even give that guy the credit of a guru. 
<laughs> but fucking like I couldn't believe that guy. Like that guy was like, and the way he would, it was even weirder because his wife is like the fucking puppet that just goes up. Oh, yeah, like he'll be like, oh, it's so divine. She'd be like, yeah, so divine, like a little parrot. Yeah. But, I, you know, that's the whole Three of Swords thing. And you know what? A lot of readings that I get when I do tarot or when I used to do my deep love tarot, just like they would always believe in that whole twin flame. Like you broke up because that's part of it. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and then like in that show, there was a girl, the guy put a restraining order and he's like, that's all an illusion. <laughs> so she kept fucking hitting him up. And so she kept believing my heart. It's going to get him. The illusion is the fucking, there's an illusion that there's a fucking restraining order. So then he kept telling, showing the cops, just keeps sending it over. And then by coincidence, which nothing is in the universe on her birthday, she decides to go out and she claims, I didn't know that he would be there. But in that show, I will say some of that I'll give to, I'm not going to give credit to that other twin flame universe, but like, there's also the part where it's like, you mean to tell me this bitch went out to the birthday and the fucking guy that she's been trying to fucking hit up for fucking months with a restraining order and she, he's sending it all in just so happens to be at the same fucking place where she ends up going to jail for a month because he calls the cops like, what the fuck is this chick doing here? That bitch stock <laughs> fucking that dude. They do, In the show though, they try to make it act like, oh, what do you mean? But that's all three sword shit to me is yeah. like, you know, oh my God, especially ideologies, mental over heart, any kind of belief system over the heart of the true heart yeah. that's happening will crush you. Yeah, I, I used to touch a lot. Well, I used to try to touch on the twin flame subject a lot on my channel back in the day because anybody who follows me knows that one, one of the things that I try to make it a really strong point to do is in the spiritual community, I like to take some of these concepts and the fluffy buzzwords and the woo woo, and I like to break it down and make it understandable, you know? Yeah. And I would say that I've been pretty successful with that in, in many different areas, but with the twin flame thing, that I, I decided to back away from that because that is still, for some reason, one of the most misunderstood concepts in the whole spiritual community. You know, first of all, you can't even guarantee that you have a twin flame. The twin flame game, as I call it, is a very specific game being played by a very specific group of entities for a very specific reason. And just like everything else in the fucking spiritual community, everybody wants to conflate twin flames with love and romance. Right. And not necessarily. I've heard many reports of twin flames not even being romantically interested in each other i mean it could be uh uh two dudes who are both straight you know it could be i've heard uh uh of both people being married to other people and that they're never romantically or sexually involved at all you right. know but everybody every fucking thing in the spiritual community always has to they always have to try to boil it down to love and romance because again, like that's one of the most, the, the, the energies that manifest romance and the energies that manifest finance are the two energies that humans struggle with the most. And to take advantage of the fact that so many humans have been reverse manifesting love and romance and they're at that lowest place of heartbreak and heartache. And, and it's just like the epitome of codependency where they're convinced that if I just find my twin flame, that's what's going to create happiness, love, and abundance for me. And, and they just took advantage of that and brainwashed the fuck out of them. I, I just can't believe that that happened in today's day and age. It blows my mind. Well, and especially when, they, to me, that third <clears throat> sword, if we take the twin flame analogy, I, I honestly believe that's all unions, right? We're, we're mere reflecting things in each other to learn. Yeah. But they made that like the main thing. Their whole idea in that is like mirroring. Which that's true, but the way that they only confine it to only for twin flames, it's like, oh, what? So every other relationship, there's no mere reflections it's only through your twin. I thought that was like stupid, but that to me is that third sword that comes in of the, of the three of swords is like this, this truth of like, hmm. So for example, oh, I've got a fucking guy I love. We broke up and he's got a restraining order on me. Now I'm going to go crazy with this one. Another analogy. 
people out there who think their dog is a fucking twin flame. <laughs> you just going to not follow the bestiality laws now? Oh, shit. Like, these people are fucking insane. Yeah. You guys weren't expecting that one, weren't you? But that's because if you know, and I think the Three of Swords, if we just bring this on a whole spiritual community thing, it's heartbreaking if you fall for some bullshit. And the only way you fall for the bullshit is it's not self-empowering you. Yeah. Right? It's, it's, it's always like about like, you need me to always make every decision for you in your life. Yeah. And then say you're bad off mm -hmm. it, right? There's always like a dark, part of it so people can get caught up three of swords can be a toxic relationship too like where it's like you keep in your mind making an excuse to not want to fucking be honest that your heart is being fucking slammed mm -hmm. or the opposite the single person that's been single for fucking 20 years you keep wrapping your whole relationship idea around some sort of mindset some sort of fucking mechanical well, when I reach this job or when somebody has this, this, and they have a dog that's 64 pounds and this breed, <laughs> like all, like, like the, our minds fuck up our hearts the worst. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and that's the hard part is people try to skate. It's a scapegoat card. I feel like it's, oh, the scapegoat of this is going to make me very happy. Mm -hmm. Well, eventually that scapegoat's <clears throat> going to come fucking come back around fucking come at you from all sides and fucking make you realize I don't have anything that's making me happy. I'm, uh, so I'm fucked now, but yeah. it's not that you're fucked. It's like good. You should look at the three of swords moment as like a revelation. Like, Oh, thank God. What was I doing? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that people look at this card as like, Oh no, it's cause you're so attached to the fucking horrible situation. That's what I always have read it as. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it still, it always circles back to, trying to find something to make you happy matter of fact i posted a meme on facebook the other day that said something to the effect of true happiness isn't getting everything that you want in fact if you're truly happy you don't really want anything to want is a lack vibration and so many people are just trapped in this this idea that if i get this thing or this relationship, or this money, that's going to create my happiness for me. And it always circles back around to that. Always. Every single time. And like what you were saying about, you know, oh, oh, one, one day when I meet a person who has this, and makes this much money, and drives this kind of car, and, and our mind is always putting happiness on the horizon so that we're chasing it. Yep. Always. And that's, that's what's so sad about why... So many people go to their deathbed having never experienced true happiness. And, and, and by no stretch of the imagination if I, am I trying to make it sound like it's easy. Right. Finding true happiness is hard. I didn't do it for the first time until I was into my 30s. I, I think I was 32 the first time I felt true happiness. Where yeah. it's like, I'm happy because I said so, you know? Because it wasn't until I was in my 30s that I found out that all that stuff doesn't make you happy. I was, I woke up one day and I, it hit me like a ton of bricks. I was living in my dream house, driving my dream car, married to my dream girl, had my kids back, working my dream job, you know, and, and, I, and I was still like, man, why am I unhappy today? And then it clicked and I was like, dude. I get it now. That's what it means when they say money doesn't buy happiness. I get it. And then I had to go inside and be like, well, how do I find happiness? How do I flip that switch and just be happy for no reason? You know? Right. And I had to go back to that mentality, honestly, when I was homeless under the bridge. There were some days where I was happier homeless than, than any other time in my life where you have nothing there is nothing to look forward to. You ain't got nowhere to go. It, no, nobody gives a shit about your existence, you know? And I realized, oh, man, I need to tap into that. And, and I figured out how to flip that switch. But it's hard to maintain because we do live in a world that everything is so programmed to have you chasing pleasure yeah. that it's hard. It's, it's tough. I still struggle with it. 
I mean, we already have to deal with the program of the Matrix, let alone then us programming ourselves on top of that. I yeah. feel like the Three of Swords is that, let me build up the story, the idea, the ideology of like why I'm single. I'm single because da 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 and I'm, I'm happier. So it's like the convincing of happiness. Like, let me convince you why I'm happy. Let me convince myself why I'm happy. And we shouldn't have to convince ourselves. So it's always in those stories of like those ideologies that let me convince you why it's better that I'm this way. You don't even have to do that. And I, I feel like when relationships come or if you're single, like always a relationships comes always when we're in like, yeah, I don't need a relationship, but it's not because yeah. it's a story. Yeah. It's never like, because we said that day, I don't need a relationship. We just already are not even thinking because that's the irony, right? So if you're thinking about the story of like, I'm single because I like to be single. And that's like the story. Well, that story is going to keep repeat. Just, okay. Yeah. So three swords is really simple to me. It's like, oh, I'm going to keep running the program that I get hurt all the time. Okay. Great. I'm so desperate. I couldn't find love everywhere. I'm going to go to twinflamesuniverse.com and fucking, you know, I'm going to, you know, and these, these two fucking weirdos are going to fucking change my life. Fucking, and they're going to tell me fucking blah, 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 and really like I'm, I'm, oh my God, I'm, I, you know what? I'm going to convince myself that I'm a divine masculine. I'm a woman. I'm going to fucking go get fucking bottom top, top surgery and fucking blah, 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 blah. it's just all those programs we run and we're already in a program matrix. That's fucking hard. So you're the three of sorts to me is like that third Oh, you want to program yourself already in the program? Great. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ugh. And also, also too, if you think about it, there's three swords. And if you look carefully, it's three different swords. Yeah. And it kind of reminds me of a lot of times, you know, what matter of fact, just today I did a reading for somebody who first said, you know, will I get divorced? And then the last question was, will I be with this person? So it's like, okay, so you're already married and you're already thinking about somebody else you want to be with. So you already have one sword in your heart, okay? Because you're already, you're already on a vibration that is manifesting a failed relationship. And this is where so many people jump from one person to the next. And I tell everybody the primary law is the law of vibration. The secondary law is the law of attraction. What that means is you attract according to the frequency in which you vibrate. So if I'm in a relationship that's failing right now, I'm on a vibration that is manifesting a failed relationship. So if I jump straight from this relationship straight into a new one and I'm on the same vibration, I'm going to manifest the same outcome. So that's another sword in the heart. And yeah. then I'm going to manifest another failed relationship. And what do most people do? Just jump straight into another one. And that's where the third sword comes in. Yeah. This is where people just bounce from person to person to person to person, thinking that, oh, one of these days I'll find the right person. Not until you change frequencies. You're like a radio. You are like <laughs> a radio tuned into a frequency. If your radio was tuned to... 98.6 top country hits and you just you know satellite radio you keep skipping to the next song it's just going to keep playing country music you're going to yeah. keep playing you're just going to have the same experience over and over and over it's not until you take a step back and slowly turn that radio dial people don't give themselves a chance to change vibrations before the next relationship and time doesn't do it some people, I've ha I had somebody say to me one time, well, I was single for two years. And I'm like, well, why didn't you use that two years to heal? Because they thought time was going to heal them, you know? Yeah, they probably should have counted how many times they masturbated. <laughs> that would have helped out. I feel, though, you said it just correct, that same frequency going in. And it might look different, but it's the same one, right? It's like, well, look it, they're a blonde. And I'm, I, I liked brunettes. It's like. That doesn't change it. But it reminds me in Snow White. What does the evil queen want? She has the box with the three of swords on it. She wants the heart of Snow White because she's mm. the fairest of them all. She sends out her fucking gardener, basically, to go get it. And then he can't go do it. He tries to kill Snow White and is like, I can't. What's, what's crazy about that idea, though, is that in that Disney movie, it's like, People create the idea of what's going to make them happier. And usually it comes with like, I want to show off. Mm -hmm. 
I want something that I feel is better than me. And if I take that energy yeah. out just today, I was just showing you that one fucking crazy TikTok or astrologer going after a bunch of astrologers because they can't get views. So mm -hmm. they just go talk shit on other ones to they their whole, that's their whole purpose of their channel. Yeah. Yeah. Like that, that, that's just like three of swords. And that's where the storm clouds with the lightning and come in. That's what I love about this card is that the, the storm cloud builds up where it's like, I'm unhappy. There's okay. There's moments in life where it's like, I'm unhappy. This happened. All right, move on. But this is where it's like, I'm unhappy. and I'm going to keep festering. And then start <laughs> just creating that fucking storm cloud over the situation. And then your desperation becomes so extreme that of course it's going to feel like, Oh, uh, uh, and then a fucking, it reminds me of, I don't know, Braveheart almost like if I was in the fucking battlefields with fucking, just, just take that third sword and just, you know, mm -hmm. ah, freedom. <laughs> That's what it is, though, is that third sword comes in to free your heart from your mind. And I feel bad because people create too many constructs of how a relationship should look. And, uh oh, you know, or, or sometimes people, if you're going into a relationship to make yourself look cooler because you know it'll upset other people, that's a fucking storm cloud. Mm -hmm. Or if you're doing it because, you know, like if you're Will Smith and Jada Peek, uh, you just are doing the relationship for the last seven years just to fucking float everybody to make you look, you know what I mean? Like, um, yeah. yeah, no wonder he was getting, I think the exact words were Will Smith was in the fucking trailer bent over and fucking homeboy was behind him murdering him. Hey, what? Oh, you haven't seen all that shit came out? No. Oh I, my I, God. I hear I hear people talk oh about it. Oh my. So that's some three sword shit. 70 years of lying to the whole world about the happiness that they were in. And now the real story comes out. Talk about a fucking storm cloud or a third sword in the middle of that thing. <laughs> so what? Will Smith was getting Will, Will fucked? Yeah, by fucking. Just go. Yeah. And now they're going to go sue. And it's one of his like Will Smith's like friends who's been with him for 40 years. And, and Q came out and was like, I was looking for Will. And they, I, went, I was looking at him. I couldn't find him. And then I went into fucking this other dude's trailer and opened it. I had the keys. And I forgot the actor's name. But long story short, he goes, I walked in there and Will was bent over fucking. And he goes, the only way I could describe it is getting murdered. I was like. That's fucking gross. That's dude. some three of swords shit, though. Like seven years of lying. I mean, you know. That's what you get. You know, there's crazy ass people out there who fucking, oh yeah, I'm in a happy, great like relationship, but we're not living together, but we're going to act like we're in one. Again, that's not true happiness or true from the heart. Or people try to act cooler the other way. Like, oh yeah, I'm single and I'm really happy. People say that. Yeah. But underneath, if I, if I were to go into their browsing history, I, I bet <laughs> you... That they are on a dating site or if you went into their phone, I bet you they had like three dating apps on. And that's <laughs> the, the problem with dating apps. Three Swords is always going to end up 95% of the time because there's that little 5% that meets somebody on like a dating app. And then yeah, it's never worked for me, but fucking, you know, everybody I know, it never works. You know why? It's because the second you're on the date, the idea of somebody better comes through. Yeah. And it, it's crazy <laughs> to me that people don't, actually want to admit that but it's like hello it's like when you were talking earlier like it doesn't feel right it's like you're not talking to your uncle yeah if you're on a date and you met off a fucking dating app and somebody's like oh well they start smiling or they start oh i'm oh i'm talking to my mom <laughs> yeah oh not only that. Or, or, or if the date wants to rush home after, I got to go. I got something to do. Oh, yeah, you got to get your other date to go to. Yeah. You got your other date to go to. Or, you know, I did it one time when I was on dating ass back in the day. I was like, all right, I'm going to fucking go on and I'm just going to see if I can make another account. I just did it one time. It was like back when it was just Tinder because I was in Hollywood. It was just a two mile radius. That's all I had to put it on was thousands of other dates, right? It was crazy. And I was like, let's see if this chick is fucking out, putting out a boost right now while I'm on a date. And she was. Hmm. 
It's like, let me go on a date and then boost myself energetically to get seen by more people. Yeah. You're already fucking yourself over the relationship. But remember there was girls coming out saying like, I was just using that shit to get free dinners. Yeah. And well, I, I mean, was like, and I, I remember I was like, is, is this for a free dinner? I mean, I have a firm belief and I think people get mad when I say this, but I don't believe there is one fucking man on dating sites looking for a wife. <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, I've never done a dating app, um, but I did a dating site back in the day. Oh, and that it, one. I, I mean, you, had some, yeah, you had some interesting situations. That was my go-to. Every time I get my little heart broke, I'd get on there and I'd just start fucking everything I could. I'm trying to find no damn Dude, girlfriend. that's what we should name a dating app, Three Swords. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was called LouisvilleMojo.com. And it was so simple back in the day. This is back in like 20, fuck, before 2010. This is like back in 08, where it just had a list of males online, females online. Bam, and that was it. And you click on one, and it has a, a couple of pictures and a description. And that's it. And I wasn't on there trying to find no damn wife. I was on there trying to get laid. And did, it, did it have a new section? Twin Flame Universe Empty Vessels? <laughs> hey, I mean, yeah, it, it, it probably... Wait, converted, 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 didn't work out. Looking for love. <laughs> now, ain't nobody... I, I, don't, I don't know a man on this planet who is looking for a wife on a damn dating app. And it, and it makes me, it, it, cause I, I do so many readings for women who are like, Oh, I met this guy on a dating app. And as soon as I read that, I'm like, Oh fuck on a dating app. You met a dude on a dating app. Uh, uh, there's a, it's can't say all. Okay. There's exceptions to everything, but what, what, what do you think? I would say probably upwards of 95% of the men on dating apps, they ain't trying to get married. They trying to get some pussy. They ain't trying to clap some cheeks. They ain't looking for no damn wife. I mean, I, I there was a there was times in my life I was on there genuinely looking for a relationship. But really? I think if if you're in the spiritual community, it's hard. You know, like being an astrologer or a tarot reader, or if you're out there and you're into this stuff, people might say, "Oh, on my profile, like I'm into tarot or astrology," but they don't really practice it. So it's like nine 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 infinity to the tenth degree. Like there's there's like this little sliver probable probability. I never saw it though. Um, you're going to be dealing with people who are in the matrix, or it was really crazy because I was on during the pandemic, and the access when the people started putting their vac status on. Oh shit! Yeah, and it was so. I remember that was refreshing. Cause I was like, thank God <laughs> I can see who the fuck is stupid and yeah. got that shit. And then, they, but it was crazy though. Cause people were actually like, if you don't have the shot, I won't go on a date with you. So it made it to where it actually thinned it out to just like the only people I would want to like possibly even go on a date with. So that was kind of like the blessing of it. Yeah. But that was that only moment. That I ever was like, oh, well, at least I'm getting to the real people. Didn't mean that any of them were super hot either, though. But it also made me realize, too, instead of having that candy pop kind of feeling of like, well, that chick's fucking hot. Because you're right. Guys on a dating app. <laughs> I mean, when it's based off just the pictures first, that, like that's what you're determining off of as a guy. Come on. But, yeah, but it was this hot chick, and I remember I said, "Well, I'm vaxxed. and I'm like, "Nope, not gonna go against myself." And I remember that moment, that first time I was like, "She's hot, but not worth. It. That's not worth it." So yeah. I feel like that's the opposite of Three of Swords, where it's like Three of Swords is just gonna go. Well, the fact is, da 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 da, and the da 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 da. I'm still gonna go. Yeah, I'm still gonna fucking try and make myself happy here, instead yeah, of like listening to my truth. And yeah, so I feel like it's like the ears would be like, I'm just making this up. The ears would be the two swords. And then the third sword is like my third eye, my brain, my whole soul and down to my fucking heart. <laughs> like, you know, like, okay, you're at that point. You're like, I'm not hearing it. I'm not like sensing anything, but oh, let's just take everything else out too. <laughs> okay. Yeah, fucking I'll go on a date with you. Give me some of your, 
Give me, I broke that ring. Rion, I need a new ring, bro. I just got this in Vegas from him. Oh, shit. Fucking, that's what you do, too. You gotta let it go. I can't be heartbroken off a ring broken. But I'm, you know, like, I forgot I was talking about Vax, Vax chicks. Well, well, how weird. Just don't, fuck it. I was just like, nope, not gonna do that shit. Very easy. But I feel like people just will go, I'm going to go through it anyway. I want to just, curiosity does kill the cat, but curiosity can kill the mind too, especially if it's curiosity going out of bounds from your divine truth, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that stuff's so sad to sit and watch too, you know, because if you pay attention, I don't know if, if you've done this, but I had this thing I like to do where I like to step back and just observe humanity just watch how humans behave it's fascinating to me and if you pay real close attention men and women have been programmed separately in their own ways to where when you put them together they completely clash if that makes sense like on the dating apps you know and and (sighs) when you look at a woman's picture as a man and she's half naked with her tits out, bent over with her ass in the air. Is that something? Are you going to want to put a ring on that? I'm not. I'm not. Might hit it, but I ain't trying to put no ring on that. And, and, and I think that are, are they under the impression that that's going to find them a husband? Because many of them have come to me for readings. Instagram models with millions of followers have come to me for readings. And it's like, I go to your Instagram, you got 2 million followers and your tits are out and you're laying there half naked with your ass up in the air. And it's like, what, what do you think that's going to attract exactly? And, and that's a genuine question. I, I, I'm, I'm genuinely curious. Do you, do, do you think you're going to find a husband like that? Don't no man want that. You want to marry that at least. I don't want my wife on Instagram with her tits out and her ass out. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm a little. But this is where we might differ. A little different. Oh really? I don't know, yeah. man. I, that's, I don't, that's never never bothered me. Well, they, I, actually, they, the, only well, no, I, the only ones I pick are those. As long as you trust her, but especially Sophia. She's so hot. Well, as, like I said, as long as you can trust her. But I'm saying, generally speaking, there's exceptions to everything. But generally speaking, for the very most part, as a man. Like, I'm not saying, you know, you wouldn't want to hit it, but typically speaking, if I'm, if I'm looking and I'm like, man, I, I want a good solid woman that I want to be in a relationship with. If I see your Instagram like that, I'm like, Ooh, whew, man, she, she likes attention. Mm, I don't think I'm going to go there. I'm not, just, yeah, but what if that's their job? Mm, you I, know, they, they always end up coming to me for readings because their love mm. life's fucked up. <laughs> Well, I, I know maybe they're not maybe fully spiritual with it. Like I'm going to admit I've used my fucking good looks and model shots and everything to promote my astrology brand. Yeah. So I got, so it's funny cause I get that from the other side of chicks. Like you, you, you push your model look too much and I'd be like, well, you're not the one for me then. And I'm like, have fun with your blanket on too much. What do you mean? Like, you know, like spirituality is supposed to be tempered down and look normal or chill or fucking like spiritual. So like I always got the like, you know, because I use, let's, we all know, everybody's fucking laughing at here. Like they all know, like the Leo King has always modeled myself off, right? Like, I'm oh, yeah. like, right? And then like, look at Sophia. She's like, I, I, I've, ne- I've always been the, like, I guess maybe that's because I'm like the guy that like doesn't get jealous. So I'm like, yep. No worries, like fucking. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's a Leo thing. No, it's not a, like you it's know, not like a jealousy. It's thing. like I'll be honest. It's like I kind of like I like kind of like that. No, it's I not like a jealousy. Thing. I like uh, for me, it's like I like it. It's like fucking my my woman is so fucking. Sexy. No, it's like, it's not a jealousy thing. If you're no! if if you're wanting to be able to show it off and say, look what I got, I get that. Totally get that. I'm talking about when you look and you see, oh, this woman is addicted to male attention. You know, that's when it's like, hmm, hmm. You're addicted to attention from other dudes. That's when it's like, uh, 
I mean, if I can I trust understand what you're talking if about, if I know too. that you're mine and you're rock solid, no, nah, I don't care. Fuck, look, look what I got. You know right. what I'm saying? But like, very generally speaking, when you look out there, it's like, oh, you're 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 addicted to male attention. Go on somewhere. I don't want that. <laughs> you know. I I mean I I I think we might differ just because like I I really feel like I'll take it from my own personal perspective. Like I knew. When I got into astrology, first of all, nobody was doing that shit fucking online. I was like, I'm going to change it. And I'm going to be the rock star, hot fucking model astrologer dude, right? But that was, that's who I am. So I feel like people could be who they are if that's truly who they are. There's some people who do it who maybe aren't. But maybe they're expressing themselves in a certain way. So, I mean, that's where I kind of might differ. Because, like, to be honest, I've met some of the most... At every strip club, I've met the most spiritual women in my life. You know, girls who model are usually the most spiritual I've ever met. Whereas to me... And that's maybe just where, where it is for me. And maybe that's my frequency, right? That matches mine. Is like, you know... People who can express themselves fully, I relate with more than people who can't. If like people can't, then I'm like, that's the heart. That's the third sword for me. I'm like, you're afraid to show yourself, you know? Uh, well, that's where it goes into That's it. where it goes into what your intentions are. And that's what I always make it a really strong point. Whenever you're dealing with anybody, you observe their intentions. Like, like I will literally sit and watch somebody. They won't even know. Yeah. I'll watch them for six months just to see what their intentions are. And just because you have good intentions doesn't necessarily mean that you do good things. I agree with that. You know, so I'll sit and observe somebody. And a lot of the observation that I've done with a lot of people, overwhelmingly the majority, is that a lot of those behaviors typically don't have a very good intention behind it, if you watch. And I don't know. Because to me, it's something totally, completely different than like the physical appearance. Now, I'm not one of those people that says beauty's only on the inside. Right. Usually, most people say that is an excuse, you know, <laughs> because they're not very attractive. Let's just right. be honest. You know, I'm not one of those people. But but I do very much understand that there is a difference between the beauty on the inside and the beauty on the outside. Yes. And if you are a good enough energy worker, you can find both. But from what I've seen out there, that's rare to find them both in the same person. It's out there. Yeah. I've seen it. But, but from, from what I've observed, it's few and far between. And I would love to be able to teach people how to integrate the two. Right. You know, the beautiful looks on the outside and the beauty on the inside. Integrate them together. Yeah. But it's so easy because most of the people, when they look good on the outside, it's much easier to get sucked in to a really dark matrix program trap, you know, because beauty, whether it's male or female, sells, you know, and that's what a lot of the people who are taking advantage of people and brainwashing people with, they're using that. They're using sexuality. Sexuality sells. So that's why if you, if you just watch, just watch, no judgment, just watch and observe people. I would say from my observation, maybe you've observed different. I don't know because we come from different backgrounds. Yeah. But from what I've observed, I've observed a, a 85 to 90 percent of people with beauty on the outside have been sucked into a trap and they don't know how to integrate their beauty on the inside with it. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, and that's where I feel like if that's coming from a non-spiritual place. Yeah. I mean, I'm an astrologer. So like Scorpio is a, a huge part of it, of the attracting energy. A spiritual attracting energy. So for me, it's like we we talk, we both agree that we we used to only look for women who had experience in their life. Yeah, <laughs> right. I, I don't want no green pea, like you know. Yeah. Goody two shoe. Yeah. That would just not work for me. So like that's where I I think maybe I'm coming from is like. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I was lucky because I had put myself out for so long. You know, it's like coming up 13 years being an astrologer online and shit. And I'm like, you know, like I've been lucky to weed through all that. And, you know, I would say that, you know, if they, if they're spiritual and doing it, I would say there's 
a lot that's that's opposite of that. They're very aware and they're just in touch with like their expression of themselves. But but if there's no spiritual aspect to it, then yeah, I would agree with you completely like fucking because that's like where they become trapped and then they become like Pamela Anderson stuck on her little island yeah, would, maxed out. Like, I would you know have to, I mean? like, I would have to see a good example you know, of, even though she's spiritual, but I would have to see, but, I would have to see a good example of spirituality being integrated in that way. I would have to see that because the overwhelming majority of what that is geared towards is not spiritual at all. I would have to see it. I would have to, I would have to see it. I'm open to seeing it. You know, I mean, I mean, but that's how my, that's how Sophia is. Like Sophia was very public about her life and showing herself and lingerie and so forth. And, and she was spiritual. We went on our first date and that, that was her life. And she was modeling in LA and she was in that world. So, but she was fully spiritual. So, Worked, it worked. It was like, I don't know. It just made sense. Hmm. I would have to see that. You I mean, like, I mean, but I, I even like me yeah, out like my whole life. I don't know, but that's maybe because I was in that world myself as a model and a TV reality show person and stuff that it was, you know, there's, yeah, sure. I think you're right. There's people who are obsessed about their looks and stuff. And there's people who are just like, just naturally themselves and they're just naturally beautiful. Yeah. And they just rock it however they rock it. And if, if it's got no attachment to it, right? Like, I feel like that's my, where it be. It's like, if you live up, like, like a good example would be the Snow White, right? Like, oh, who's the fairest of them all? And then when somebody is more fair than them, then they freak out, right? Like, for me, it's like, I'm definitely not the young kid on the block anymore. You know what I mean? I'm getting older. So it's like, I'm not attached to my look anymore. You know, they're like, oh, I gotta like... I haven't, you don't see any more model pictures of me or shit. I don't go get photo shoots done or any more. You know what I mean? It's like, eh, it's rock it how I am. But I don't know. That's an interesting place because I feel like if people are attached to anything outside of their spiritual self that makes them happy, but they're really, maybe the question would be like, are they fulfilled from that? Yeah. Right? Which I don't think that fulfills anybody. I think it's just a, part of something deeper that like for me it was part of my my brand it was part of my and it's, it's, it's part of my persona so and i think there's other women that are like that like i can be honest like i've met the most badass people that are hot as fuck usually the ugly ones that are the most weird <laughs> to be honest with you yeah yeah no it's absolutely <laughs> possible i've always been a big pusher in integrating you know, like I said, this one thing that used to get on my nerves so bad is when people would say the real beauty is on the inside. And what, what they're really saying is if you're attractive, you're evil. You're only a good person if you're ugly. And it's like, nah, that's bullshit. You can find both. And I went and scoured the population. And it's hard to find. It's real hard to find. It's out there in very small numbers. But it's real hard to find. I mean, like I said, I went and played around. I banged a chick that was in Playboy, you know. I've, I've, and, and, and it's really, really hard to find. The overwhelming majority of men and women just get sucked into it, man. You know, and, and it's sad. It's, it's really sad. That's again, goes back to one of my biggest goals with this show is to put the tentacles of spirituality into every right. aspect of life. Because that's that, the whole point of this show. Yeah, that's so lacking out there. So fucking lacking. And, and I, th I think we'll do it. I know. We, and we already are. And I feel like those tentacles can be positive. But the negative ones are the three of swords to me where it's that attachment to maybe it's a lifestyle, an ideology, something that's unfulfilling. And usually, like I said, it's always got a connection to try and prove something to other people. That's where maybe that third idea of like a third party is to me. It could be a person all the way to a group, to an invisible group. Usually it's an invisible group. I think people think that they're, you know, oh my God, what are, what is everybody going to think about me? It's like, well, mm -hmm. who's everyone? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, you've been doing this a long time. I've been doing this a long time. I know a lot of other people have been doing it. Like when you get to a place like we have, like, like 
you already know you might have hundreds of thousands of people, but that doesn't mean everybody's watching or everybody's talking about you or everybody's watching everything. Yeah. So like, like there is not everybody's thinking about you all at once. That's why I think that that's another trap. Yeah. So I could see that from people putting their looks as their number one identification of their self and their soul. Like then mm -hmm. that's where you're trapped and worried about what everybody's going to look at when nobody's really looking and change who you are or pick stupid ideas and <laughs> your heart and, you know, end up looking fucking like you're unbotched. Yeah. You know, because you, 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 you're tweaking yourself out so much to look for some invisible audience that isn't there. I think that invisible audience though of our <laughs> heads is the worst thing that could ever happen because it's easy to, pick anybody in that invisible audience as a person that's in front of you to a person that could be in your life and attach them to that invisible audience and kind of separate you from them and like start coming up with ideas that there's somebody because the three of swords come to me can be a very cold energy like a very cold heart and and to where it's like almost kind of schizophrenic creating stories all the time and like oh you're a bad person you're a bad person you're a bad person. You're a bad person. You're a bad. Person. And it's like, I feel like when it comes to the hearts, it's, it's warm. And I think that, you know what, those of us with warm hearts, which I know you have too, we we're, we're easy targets in life. And so you have to kind of like learn that there's a lot of three of sword moments when you're a wide open heart, instead of looking at that as a negative thing, make that remind you of how warm of a heart you have as a person, because it's worse, I feel, to uh, live as the Three of Swords yeah. than to experience lots of Three of Swords moments. There's a big, I think that's where the big difference is, you know? Yeah, I, I tell people all the time, again, it all circles back to intention. That, yeah. That's the most underrated thing that people don't pay attention to is it's intention. And I, and I tell my audience and my clients all the time that, um, you know, it's kind of hard to explain. I always think that I've explained it the right way. And then I'm like, nah, fuck, I fucked it all up. But, but well, let, let me put it to you like this. Most people would rather dump all of their energy into making people think that they're happy right. than take that energy and actually create a happy life. You know, and it's really sad. You see, you see so many people living in this, like you said, the audience in their mind. And, and in order to be that warm, open heart, the art of being vulnerable and, and not living in that three of swords energy is being okay with your intentions. Because at the end of the day, I figured out a way because that, that's how I always was. I was so sensitive and so open and I would just get my fucking heart ripped out every time. But now I go back to my intentions. So I'm like, when I go to bed at night, I know my heart's in the right place. Right. I know that my intentions are good. And maybe I can't trust you. Hey, maybe I can't. You could totally fuck me over. But I can still go to bed at night and not worry about yeah. nothing because I know I didn't do nothing wrong. Right. I know that my heart's in the right spot. So if you're in a relationship with me or you're my friend or you're a, an acquaintance of mine or if you're a business partner or whatever and you fuck me over, I can go to bed at night knowing that that's not on me. Yeah. You know? Well, and, and it, I, yeah. And I feel like taking from where you're saying, it's like, I think the worst is when something happens to somebody and they transmute that energy into a person they love. But they take that like, so it's the victim because there's a very victim element to this card, right? It's like, like you were saying, you can go to bed and be like, hey, if something, something happens to me, I know in my heart, I didn't do anything bad and I'm cool with myself and I'm happy with myself. That's boom, because you're not going to take that and try and transmute that into, okay, I'm a victim. Yeah. And now this is like, now it's like yelling at people that you love. Mm -hmm. Like, that, hey, that, hey, hey, wait, that, 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 that's not anybody here. That's where that third party chick can get weird, where it's like, don't bring in somebody else's negative energy that trampled on your own shit and then bring that to me, right? Like friends can do that to us, lovers, yeah. anybody. It's like, just because you're in a bad mood, don't bring that and transmute that bad mood into reflect. And we do that all the time. I've fucking, I've done that. We all do that. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's not a fucking easy thing, but I think that's where the three of swords teaches us like, yo, all right, this is not made me happy. Work's going bad, whatever it might be. It's money, life, problems. Okay. 
That's because my expectation was different. Yeah, yeah. My expectation was that it was going to be easier. My expectation wanted this at this moment. It's not happening at this moment. Yeah. I think it's a great awakening moment of being like, okay, well then what is the universe opening up to then? And always directing that positive road and taking those swords out and letting the heart fucking find the moment opposed to focused on the swords that are stuck in and going, I don't know what to do. So I'm just going to let it just keep letting the swords come out and letting my mind run a million miles mm-hmm. or letting the negative energy out, like pull them out. And like, even if it's raw, it's better to be raw and unfiltered and in, in your true happy self and heart, you're going to find the road that's right for you opposed to, I don't want to feel so raw. I want to just close up. Cause that's what happens. Lots mm-hmm. of three swords moment. People close up like, yeah. you know what? I just got fucking broken up with. I'm going to close up. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay. It's like, it's weird because it's swords. And what happens if you're on the battlefield and the sword goes through you? You don't keep it in. You pull it out. Mm -hmm. Uh, Same thing with a bullet. You don't let a bullet just sit inside of you. You pull it out. The first thing the doctors are going to do is like, let's pull that shit out. Mm -hmm. Like fucking, but people want to sit with whatever hits them and just hold that shit. And I know already there's enough spiritual people who fucking are fanatical about sugar and fucking weird shit right you know what i mean it's like oh my god i can't I'm, i drink, I drink a little bit of sugar i'm gonna die <laughs> it's like what are they gonna do try and get it out well then you're not gonna get anything unless you take whatever's happened to you and you pull it out of you and you don't spread <laughs> it on other people because i feel like that three of swords can be really easy to create storm clouds around yourself or get charlie brown and just start letting a storm cloud follow you Mm -hmm. and you're not going to manifest from that place at all like (laughs) it's not going to manifest anything people are going to be walking up like it's like yeah the universe you you already set out all those fucking fishing reels of all those things that manifest and as you're sitting there you're like why aren't they coming to me look up get that fucking storm cloud above your head yeah that's why people like might not you might not even be able to physically see that but you might come into their energy and somebody might be like I don't know. Their energy's just not right right now. I don't know. It's like, oh, you're carrying that three of sword shit. When my dad died, I carried that three of sword shit around me for fucking months. And it was like, I lost tons of people, tons of fucking people in my life that didn't even want to be around me. And I was like, why is this happening? Until I fucking came out and I put a video up on YouTube. I said, I'm okay, but I'm not okay. And I let everybody know I'm not fucking doing well. And I'm sorry if that's been brought on to you but i remember that was a very vulnerable moment in my life and i was like fuck you know like i gotta let people know hey like my attitude my mind my heart my happiness like i've just gone through the death of my dad and had to be there through the whole fucking thing and all this crazy shit that just like really fucking hurt i mean that 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 kind of situation is a little bit different though because i remember the day that i came home and found my grandfather dead was the only dad i ever had in my life dude that rearranged my brain chemistry right that i've not been the same person since that day that's different but with 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 something like but it still continues to linger on yeah and and it it's a different healing process that you have to go through what what you know most people with the storm cloud it's their perception They, they they have the wrong perception that turns into this cyclical perpetual self-fulfilling cycle of manifesting bullshit like i'll never forget the day that that it clicked in my head because there was this thing that kept happening to me over and over and over and i didn't realize what i was doing at the time now looking back i was just a fucking a pathetic simp (laughs) back in the day but Uh, like i would just be so desperately offering a woman the fucking world dude and every single time I would get rejected for some of the most embarrassing fucking men that you've ever seen in your life. Hmm. And I just kept reinforcing this negative. I guess I'm just not good enough, man. What am I doing wrong? I'm not good enough. And then I'll never forget the last time that it happened. Like if you, and and I know how horrible and arrogant this sounds, but I'm not even fucking kidding you. If you saw this pathetic, embarrassing excuse for a man I got rejected for you probably wouldn't even believe me <laughs> you, you probably think I was lying to you and I'll never forget I was just stewing on it like I can't believe 
she rejected me for that. And then it clicked. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. If she's that stupid, maybe I didn't miss out on anything. Right. I mean, maybe if, if, if that's the way her brain works, maybe she's the dumbass. And then it clicked. Ain't nothing wrong with me. You're the right. one that chose that over this. You're the fucking idiot. And from that point forward, my life was just a, a continuous, you know, uphill. Right. And, and, and it's a shift in perspective. And the example that I give, I like to give my, my uh, subscribers and my clients this example. Imagine you see a homeless dude standing on the road holding a sign that says, homeless, please help. And you walk up to him and you try to offer him a diamond ring. Here, take this diamond ring. You know, you can have it. You can take it up to the pawn shop, get an easy 1200 bucks out of it. And he turns you down. Nah, those are probably fake diamonds. I don't want that. I'm going to stand here and hold my sign. And hopefully, hopefully somebody will give me five bucks. You know, are you going to waste your time sitting there begging and pleading him for him to see the value in that diamond ring? No, you're going to call him an idiot. You a fucking dumbass. You, you, you're going to turn this down and stand there hoping that somebody is going to give you money. All right, you dumbass. You're the one missing out, not me. And you right. got to look at yourself the same way. Dude, I know what I have to offer. I know what I'm bringing to the table. What I have to offer is what every woman says she wants. You hear all these women out here bitching and complaining that men are like this and they want a man like this. And that's what I'm fucking offering. Any woman that's too stupid to see that, I'm not missing out on. That's, that, that's no. not a loss for me. That's a loss for her. And it's that change in perspective. You have to, you, well, first of all, first of all, you have to actually be offering something, you know? Yeah. So again, it goes back to intention. You have to be able to check with yourself. What is it that I have to offer? What am I bringing to the table? As long as it's actually something good, anybody that's too stupid to see it, that's their loss. And you have to be able to see it that way. Once you make that shift in perspective with the right intentions, everything will change. The types of people that you attract into your life will change. The way people see you will change. People don't understand. You have to see yourself a certain way before other people will see you that way. You know? Yeah, I was going to say that rejection, that rejection's protection. It always is. Yeah. We never look at it that way. But then it's like, you transmuted that rejection into, well, why would I even want to be with something that fucking doesn't see my value? Yeah. It reminds me too of like, if you don't have your value and let, let's say you're feeling what's crazy to me, which I'm not saying crazy, like you're a crazy person in the world, but like, it's, it's an interesting, like psychological slash spiritual thing where people feel like the world will reject them if they don't look a certain way. So it's like they'll change themselves based upon the idea that they don't want to be rejected, even though they're not being rejected. Right? So it's like my dad always used this best joke. It's like this girl goes in to get a fucking, a Biden fucking face fucking <laughs> lift. But the doctor says, I have a new version. You can just, on the back of your head, it's under your hair, you can just start clicking a quick little dial. And we'll tighten it up, but don't push it too much. Just you know, when it starts loosening a little, you just just do a little click, click, click. And it's the Biden version. If you notice Biden, they did it. right. So she goes ahead and gets it, and twenty years go by, and you know, she goes on a date, click, click. She goes on this date, click, click. She goes to that big award show, click, click. And twenty years go by, and she's like, "Fuck, I got a goatee. What the fuck's happening?" Uh -huh. so she goes to the doctor. He's like, twenty years later, he's like. I told you not to crank on that thing so, so much. She's like, yeah, but I had all the parties, all the dates. I wanted to always impress everybody. She goes, but I got a goatee now. And he goes, honey, that's not your goatee. That's your fucking runway that came all the way up. <laughs> but I feel like that three of swords is very much where we always keep clicking those things that don't make us happy that we think this will make me happier. Mm -hmm. This will make me happier. 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 And it's all the illusion. Yeah. And then the cost that comes with that is, well, if it was in that situation, yeah, 
your fucking whole entire fucking vag is gonna be up by your fucking yeah it's gonna be your second mouth <laughs> but people click all day the victim story the unhappy story the rejection story the why am i not here now the expectation and let me replace that expectation <clears throat> with a click of being a fucktard without realizing it and just doing whatever I can to fill myself with empty situations to continue to have an empty fucking thing to keep clicking. Cause I'm more addicted to the click than I am to feeling normal. Yeah. I, I can remember that too. Cause this is one of the most important lessons I learned going into my thirties throughout my twenties. I was always so vain and self-conscious and I could not, if, if my facial hair wasn't trimmed, right. I just wanted to put a fucking bag on my head. I didn't want to go out in public. I was oh, Vir Virgo rising. I would spend <laughs> like so, Virgo rising, Virgo boom. I would spend so <laughs> much time in the in the mirror, fucking making sure everything was perfect, making sure <laughs> everything looked so perfect. And and going into my thirties, I started realizing nobody gives a fuck. Ain't nobody paying attention to me like that. They're all worried about the same damn thing. They ain't paying attention to me. Right. Every human being on the planet is just wondering what everybody else is thinking about them. But nobody else is paying attention to them. Everybody's thinking the same thing. That clicked in my mind when I was about maybe 31. And then I really loosened up on that. I, I still want to look good when I leave the house. Don't get it twisted. Right. But but uh, if my hair's a little fucked up or if my beard's not quite right, eh, whatever. Ain't nobody going to notice. Nobody cares. Well, I, I learned this by, because of course I'm a new dad. And so with a baby, when we're young, we don't recognize things like that as a baby. When it comes to our family or our parents, we only recognize their eyes and their mouth. Right? Because they, when, when your eyes, you, when you come out of the womb, you can barely see. So it's hearing, hearing the voice. Oh, okay. And then once your eyes start coming on to recognize you babies, you notice they do this. They, they look up at your eyes and look up at your mouth and they go, oh, it's you. Hmm. So that's how we're wired. So when, when you actually think about people, you're not like looking at the whole thing. You're always looking at the eyes and, and the mouth and that's it. That's how you're looking at it. You're not going at, well, how many hairs on the goatee do you have? Like, yeah. how's the hair look? Or da, 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 da. We still do it today. Like if you're, that's still, people don't realize it. That's how we're actually spiritually, mentally wired is the eyes are the eye, the windows to the soul. We're, you know, and that's, what's weird is when people can't look at you in the eyes, like that's what I'm always like, Oh, that's that to me. That's, I don't I wouldn't even call that three of swords. I'd be like seven of swords. I'm like, Oh, what yeah. are you really up to? You know what I mean? Like, and you can't even look at me in the eyes. Yeah. And, th and that's where people have problems or especially if they tell you something like serious, like, I don't want to be with you, but they're like this. I don't want to be with you. They can't look at you in the eyes and tell you it's like, is that true? Or what's the real fucking thing? You're just trying to run away to some shady situation. But that's the weird irony about what we expect and what we think people are looking at is not how we were wired. We were wired the same way. Or cats are the best example. Cats go off your smell. And mm -hmm. it's the try, it's the, it's the, it's the, what all, what all, that's why cats rub themselves on everything and yeah. on others because it's the, it's got to smell like the alpha male in the tribe and that's it. Yeah. They don't go off, oh my God, look at you, fucking stupid ass bitch, fucking dyed your hair red yeah that doesn't matter hmm. yeah. the smell I could so see. to me i when i look at people i don't look at the physical i look at the soul like i feel like the soul energy i can be like you're off like something's not mm -hmm. it's not because of how somebody looks or whatever it's like what's off about you right now like why aren't you just like where's your soul like not showing itself right now Are you or when somebody's in their mind which is so three of swords it cuts off the fucking soul and the heart from expressing itself. So it's like the heart chakra. It express if that if that's not if that's being closed by the mind, you're just in the mind. That's anxiety. It's oppression. That's unhappiness. It's just just turning and turning and turning. And then you might look good on the outside, but that doesn't matter. Especially when you're in a horrible anxiety attack or a panic attack, you could look like a million bucks and be like, I would. You would give all that you owned trillion. If you were a trillionaire, you'd give all trillion dollars to get that feeling away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And most people get in that position because that's the stuff that they're focused on is outside of just like, why are you not opening your heart chakra up? Why are you in your head all the time? And so some people are like, well, I can't love right now. Or I can't be happy because I'm in my mind. I'm under anxiety attack. It's like, well, that's the exact answer to your problem. Like that's why the four swords that comes after the three of swords is 
the best, one of the best swords cards. It's the four swords mm -hmm. sitting in a safe, beautiful chapel. But Chilling. there's a lot to that card. We, I can't wait. Did we, did we do that one? I don't think we no. did. But there's so much in that card that's so beautiful and so trusting, but also grateful before the war and grateful if it's returned after the war. Of like, hey, if I do go to war and die, at least I know I'm going to be buried in a nice place with family and protection and God's love. And if I come back, I am so grateful that I came back. The Lord protected me and the universe protected me. So I feel like when people get so stuck in, I am not able to love because I'm under anxiety. Well, that's your problem is that you're in your mind. You need to get back into your heart. So people get frustrated all the time and think, oh, I'm going to fix things right now by being upset about my mental problem. It's like, turn that up to back to going back into love. I remember when I was in my panic disorder for years, the only thing that would get me out of it was one, I'd listen to a song and cry or two, like my cat. That's all I had at the time. And I would love on my cat and then I'd feel better. But that second, I didn't know. I'm like, uh, and I had separated myself from so many people just doing my work and just focused on my work so much that I fucking was just living in a fucking castle by myself and having panic attacks. It was horrible. Hmm. Horrible. Yeah. I always thought I'm just actually, I'm just now learning that, that being able to feel somebody's energy when you're around them. <clears throat> I don't think that's something that everybody does I, I thought it was normal up until here honestly this last year and and having conversations with leah is is what's really awakening me because like i said me and her are very different in the way we express ourselves she is bubbly I, you see i know we were in vegas together you see, <laughs> you see her out in public she you'll be her best friend in five minutes I'm very reserved. Now, Vegas is a different story. We were partying. We were having a good time. But just in everyday life, I'm very introverted and very quiet. And and she used to get frustrated about it. And she didn't even know what an introvert was. I had to, to show her. You, you honestly weren't that way in Vegas. Yeah, all. no, no. It's it's totally different. When I'm when I'm in a place where especially I'm, I'm meeting people who are like fans of my work and stuff and, and I'm making myself be extroverted. It drains the shit out of me, but I can do it when I need to, but just in regular Projector life. Yeah. Yeah. In regular everyday life, when we're out running errands or, or we're hanging out, whatever, I'm very quiet and introverted. And, and I was having to explain to Leah that the reason I'm like that is because I can feel a genuine connection immediately, immediately. A, somebody starts up a random conversation with us out in public instantly bullshit i feel it i can feel i can f i don't even know how to put words behind it but i can tell when you're just making noise at me and yeah. when you're genuinely connecting with me right i can feel it instantly i don't know how to explain it and and she's like how do you know and i'm like i don't know because every now and then every now and then she'll be like wow you were actually carrying on a conversation with that person i was like because i could feel a connection Yep. Every now and then, it's very, very rare. It's probably only maybe 10% of the time. You know, when you know, you're out somewhere and maybe you're standing in line and somebody turns around and has a conversation with you and I can feel instantly, oh, you're just, you're feeling awkward. You're nervous. I can feel your nervous energy and you're just trying to fill the silence. You know, I can, I don't know how I can just feel. And I thought everybody knew that. And I, that, that's the main reason why I'm so introverted and quiet is because I don't like meaningless connections I, I am not gonna sit here and just make noise at you because you're bored right. and because you're feeling awkward and you're nervous and you're distracted and you need somebody to distract you from your thoughts i'm not gonna do that i'm not gonna play that game with you i'm not gonna play the game of uh, look how friendly i am you know that's another game that a lot of people like to play when you walk up to the cashier and, oh, how's your weekend going? Dude, you don't give a fuck how Man, my weekend's going. I must have dealt with every rich lop in the universe when I was in Canada. Because I went to, <laughs> at every, in Canada, I went to every gas station. I was like, hey, how's your day going? <laughs> they must all be projectors. Yeah. But I think that's the interesting part about being a projector like you with the auric field, the widest aura there is. Like it's fully just wide open. That you feel everything. Yeah. So it makes a lot of projectors like I, their whole like life story is based off the relationships that they get invited into. That's it. Yeah. And to, to be the one that's going to show everybody and be the one that shows all the wisdom that you've gathered. Right. And that, like, that's a, that's a very, I would say the three swords moments, probably projectors have the most of them because it's like, 
you could show your how amazing your gift, your talent is or whatever, but if somebody doesn't recognize that yeah. and they fucking just want to talk about other bullshit or use your energy yeah. or or make it all about themselves and not it's like a projector life is like three of swords all the time, like, oh God. <laughs> And I, yeah, you know. I'm honestly, I'm really thankful that you hit me to that, that information too, because since studying that and researching that, understanding the reason why makes life so much easier. Cause I just always thought that there's just something fucking wrong with me, you know, my whole right. life. Like what is wrong with me? And now it's like, oh, there's this thing called human design and, you know, and, and I, you know, you reading, reading, reading that information. It's like, dude, that makes fucking sense. So it's it's make it makes a lot of these situations a lot easier to deal with, even though it's still annoying. Right. Because I thought everybody could feel the energy of everybody around them. Right. You know, when somebody walks into the room, it's I don't know if I, I don't I don't know if I'm taking on their energy. Or, or, you know what you said it perfect the other day when you're about to do a reading for somebody and you can feel their energy. Before ha- I yeah, even know I'm doing it. It yeah. happened the other day. I'm sitting there. And, and the reading was like at 11 o'clock AM it's 10 55 AM. I go ahead and click the link and then bam, I get hit with the biggest anxiety attack. And then she was a no show. And I was like, Oh, she got scared, you know? And Oh, okay. That's, that's fucking accurate. But I thought everybody could do that. Right. You know, could, well, I was going to say like for a projector it would be more in the onset of things. It was just like, Oh, the bitterness is what comes for projectors. That's the, when, oh, it just, it's like a bitter, like, fuck. Yeah. But like somebody that's a generator, a manifesting generator, right? Or a manifester, like we deal with it on the long end, which I would say is like horrible. Like we'll get stuck in a situation we hate. Where a projector won't. A projector will be like, oh, fuck. Like, you know, I'm not being recognized. Da, da, da. Yeah. Sometimes projectors have to learn the hard way and be like, oh my God, I'm tapping into this energy field. And yeah. Oh, this is the battery that's fucking going off. It's acidic. <sighs> but a fucking generator, a manifesting generator, especially generators, right? The second that they make a commitment to something, it's not until it goes to fucking all hell that they can get out. They're stuck in it. Hmm. So a lot of people, because most, you know, 70% of the world are generators and manifesting generators, right? Get stuck. So it's like, instead of like listening to the, oh, this is not right. Cause we have a big aura field too. Just ours isn't, ours is more of like, it needs to feel good right away. Or if it doesn't feel good right away, that's a no. Yeah. So if it feels good, okay. But then it's about, especially I'm a manifesting generator. It's like, okay, let me go to the next round. Does it still feel good? Nope. Pull out. What do you mean? I already got in a little bit. It felt good before. Nope. That's still an out. Doesn't mean just because it felt good the first time, which I think that goes into the twin flame thing, right? It's kind of like, Oh my God, it was like so meant to be right now. <laughs> it's like, okay, what about two weeks now? Yeah. Um, no. Well, I, I did two weeks ago. Well, it doesn't anymore. So pull out. Nope. Four weeks from now, it doesn't feel good. I'm trying to relive that. What a month ago, what happened? And then, you get to three years later, I'm still trying to fucking live what happened the first time I met them. Yeah. yeah. It's like that. Sorry. That's three swords. Yeah. And that, that's like, that's where it doesn't, the, the human design can help with that shit. But I would say that that's where some people choose the long road to wait for that three of swords to just be the whole time three of swords, but convincing and convincing themselves that the one time it felt good, which generators usually are those people, right? just because generators don't have that manifesting energy to understand the in initiative about situations to initiate it. But and that's going into human design, but I just feel like that's what you could take that away and just look at three of swords can be at the beginning, the middle, the end. And it depends on where you want it to be. Personally, I like it at the beginning a lot better because fuck, I think there's nothing worse than going through something for a long fucking time. Knowingly know it's going to crush you and still taking it on. And I think that's the worst part about this card is like, you actually have the facts, you actually know, but you're in disbelief enough that you've turned that off, that you're willing to create a false heart. You're creating a fucking heart that's full of fucking horrible strife, discord, all the things in life that you don't want it to be. And you're going to still accept it. Yeah. And then when that moment finally comes, it feels really extremely crushing, even though it's the same crushing that you just weren't able to face at the beginning. It's not even that bad, big a deal. To me, the three of swords is a lightweight card, you know, it's light. Yeah. It's like, 
today there was wind. It'd be like, okay, said it was going to be windy today. Would I be, have I learned enough three of swords lesson to not wash my car <laughs> on the day of the wind and think that it's going to stay looking fresh <laughs> when there's dust everywhere? Yeah. And that, that to me is the three of swords moment. It's just like, oh my God, I washed my car and now it's dirty. It's like, well, yeah, it's <laughs> fucking windy. That happens to me all the time. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, it, it, it's a big red flag when, like what you were saying, that you know, you know, you have the facts, you know that this is going to rip your heart out, but you do it anyway. Well, why is that? Why would somebody do that? Why on earth? Would we prefer a toxic situation over being alone? And I'm, I'm, I'm not one of those people that preaches, go be alone. I'm not saying go, that's not the point. The point of it is, is if you just imagine in fantasy fairy tale land, you had to make one of two choices, either be alone for the rest of your life or be in a toxic, miserable relationship. So many people would pick the toxic, miserable relationship. They would pick that over being alone. If it now, now again, not saying go be alone, but if given those two choices, you would be afraid of being alone. That to me indicates a big problem. I mean, you have to, you have to get so sick of being hurt. Most people, if, if you ever met a real true, genuine pair of divine life partners, most of them have a very similar story. They gave up on relationships before they met right they got their heart ripped out and that's the whole process depicted in the suit of cups we talked about it on that right. one episode you know how it goes from seven eight nine yeah. ten where i've just had my heart ripped out over and over and over and over i can't take no more i can't take no more of this shit i would rather be alone and and celibate for the rest of my life than even take the chance on going through this again which that's what i did dude before I met Leah, dude, I went and I cornered myself away. No women allowed. You know, I went celibate. I didn't get laid for seven months by choice, turning women down left and right. Women sending naked pictures of me and shit and videos, you know what I'm saying? And nope, nope, nope. So do, do they make like men chastity belts? <laughs> Did you have one of those? Like, I just, I like, was just so tired of, of this it's like what would i rather have this or not get laid again to me this hurts this hurts i can't take it i would rather if 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 i had to go through this again i would give up getting laid for the rest of my life before i would go through this shit again it's not worth it the pain is not worth it i i just got yeah. to that point where it was like no it's it's not worth it just to get laid it's not worth it. The drama and the pain that comes along with it isn't worth it. So fuck it. I'm done. So what happens when people do that, which few people give themselves permission to go that far, but what happens is very similar. Let me use an analogy. Have you ever met a, a kid who's like real spoiled by their parents? A lot. You know, I, I, I grew up in Orange County. I, I was one of those kids, you know, spoiled, catered to my whole life, bailed out of trouble. I didn't know how to take care of myself. And then I went homeless. I went homeless. Something clicked in there. This beast awakened. We got to survive. We got to figure yeah. this out. So similarly, that may be a weird analogy, but similarly, if you give yourself permission to give up and say, you know what? Nobody's coming to create my happiness for me. No, there, nobody's coming to fill this void. They're not out there. I'm done. Something clicks and that void starts filling itself because the subconscious mind goes well shit nobody's coming we've been waiting for the right person to come fill this void our whole life and they're not out there so we gotta adapt so that void starts filling itself people don't even realize what's happening they start you know what i have to find my own happiness i have to create my own love and abundance for myself they don't realize they're doing it so then, so then what happens is now they start raising up out of that low frequency of neediness and codependency. And then the, one of the first things they'll notice when they get to that nine of cups energy, yeah. if you notice in the nine of cups, he has his back turned to all those cups. You're attractive now. Now people notice you because you're not interested because you're 
you're elevated up out of that low vibration. Now you're attractive. And most people go through a period where they're turning relationships down left and right. Not everybody, yeah. but most of the people I've met go through a period where they're turning people down. No, I'm good. No, I'm good. And then right when you least expect it, that's when your actual person shows up. It's pretty cool. I agree. I think if I think of the three swords and I think of the storm, I think that storm around the, th the swords are all the things that we expect God to bring us to make us happy, including a relationship. I feel that when we get through that moment, like you described, you and I are similar where we've gone homeless or there's been other times in life where other shitty things have happened and it brings you with yourself and it brings you to find that clarity within yourself. Like that's the moment when it's just you and God. And most people are not satisfied with that. So most people say they love God so much yet God gives you that moment usually after three of swords moment where it's like, let me bring a storm to all the things that you identified that I am. God has now been identified through the success. God has now been identified through the happiness and love of only this outside thing. God is always in those moments bringing you to a place where you have to just be in full love with just you and God and the, the source that created you and you accepting the benefit and the beauty that that gift has been given to you. But that's where most people can't sit in. And that's where they start freaking out. And then they actually don't realize that they start creating more of a storm around the relationship with God because their identification of God happens to be, well, when I'm able to afford something at Best Buy, I want whenever I'm able to do this, that's when I'm happy. And that means that's godly. <laughs> and so to me, the three of swords is like, okay, you made God these external things that make you happy. So I'm going to fucking storm through and I'm going to take that false heart and I'm going to get it away. And then I'm going to now have you have a relationship with me fully. And most people will reject God in that moment and try and go, let me go out and find the next thing that's going to make me happy. Because I identify God as success. God is this is me when I'm happy. When I'm able to have this, then obviously God's in my favor. It's like, what if the biggest favor that God can do is to bring you alone with the relationship with God and the divine truth and... It might feel alone, but you're the farthest from being alone. You're f fully fulfilled in God's true love and happiness. Yet it's in those moments that I feel people find their true spirituality and go do great spiritual work. But I, I feel like the three of swords is that process of people having to learn to come into that and understand what's going on. Because after they have fully accepted that God, I'm in totally cool. With like I'm alone. I'm doing these things. I'm doing it for the favor of God, not for the favor of myself. That's the big shift, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, and it usually happens by accident. Yeah. yeah. It's hard to do it on purpose. Like, and that's that all circles back to, I, I've never heard of one person. Tell me if you have. I've never met one person who took a spiritual path without hitting rock bottom. Every single person I've ever met who was on a spiritual path, who has awakened, all has one thing in common. They were severely traumatized. So that's why I say most of the time that stuff happens by accident. It happens through pain and trauma. And, and you're at that point where, where you, don't, you don't know where to turn. You have nowhere to turn. So you give up and, and throw in the white towel. And that's the reason why people who follow this content, tarot readers on the internet, with all due respect, they're some of the most broken people on the planet. I was one of them. That's the reason why it's so important that I think those of us who are in this position give the knowledge of, look, you don't have to let it get to that point. Right. You know, it, it, that, that, that I think is going to be the biggest, the, the, this is the tricky part is all the people who are out there who are just hanging on by a thread. But most of the time, the awakening experience doesn't happen until that thread breaks and everything crashes. And, and getting people to understand you can take the spiritual path before everything goes to shit. You don't have to wait until your life right. comes crumbling down, but that just seems to be the way we all do it. And that's why I think the things that are coming next year, it's, it's being allowed to get to that point because it's going to scare the shit out of people enough to where they're going to wake up, you know? Yeah, I agree with that. I, I would say though, when I think of, 
every human being goes through trials, tribulations, and you could say that every human being has gone through pain and suffering and feeling broken. Cause that's like, like what, um, the Christian community against the new age right now, that's what they're putting out is like the whole new age community is broken as if they are the all enlightened that Jesus Christ made them unbroken <clears throat> and that they were never broken and that only <laughs> broken people go to new age. So I don't agree with that full statement. When I think of that we're all human beings and we all have three sword moments. It's weird though. Cause like when you were saying like, it's a third party, like I, and I'm, and this is me being 100% real. Outside energy of people has never been my pain. Nobody's really ever broken me. It's always my own actions for me. Like my own fucking way that I built my life to where I go through anxiety or my own way that I've gone through things, my own like, oh, I fucking chose to go into the Navy and now I'm stuck. Why did I do that? So like, I've never had somebody hurt me which might sound fucking crazy. Like I don't have other people's pain fucking like. That's interesting. Like I, it's just cause it, to me it's like, maybe it's a Leo thing. I'm just like, uh, yeah. I'm gonna still keep being my own badass self. And I always had that in front of me, like eh, oh, whatever. So like I never went through depression. I never went through uh, this breakup that I can't eat or I can't think about, not stop not thinking about them or something. Like it, like it never has been that way my whole life. It's so weird. Mm, that's interesting. But that energy within myself, with those choices that I make within myself or how I'll beat my own self up or stuff like that, or like my own self-inflicted traumas were drug use. It's the point to where it was like, fucking I don't know how many times I was like, okay, I'm going to die right now. Okay. Fucking I don't know how I lived, you know? <laughs> yeah. But, but, and those were the moments that I was just like, shit, man, I fucking, why did I do that to myself? Why did I do that to myself? Why, you know? And, and so to, I think it could be any set of factors for people. Some people might be more externalized. Like, I can't believe this happened to me. Yeah. And then others, it's more internalized. Like, why did I do this to myself again? Why did I crush my own heart? Especially cause yeah, I dealt with a lot of rejection, but that never like made me like so pissed. It was more just like, what do I have to keep changing in myself to where I'm not rejected so much? And then it was like, Oh wait, I have Chiron in the 10th house. I'll always be rejected. So astrology saved my life. Really? It was just like, Oh, that's maybe why I'm, I don't know. I'm Jupiter and Capricorn. So I only, my visualization of the world is not like everybody else's mine's on a mission and that's it. Anything that breaks off the mission is just like, well, you're not on the mission. Next, keep going. I've been lucky that this life to be able to, but it's the worst Jupiter to have, but I can understand because most people find so much benevolence in so many things where I don't. I only find it in very small things in my life, anything in my mission, that's my family in my mission, the little things in my mission, the people in my mission, and that's it. Anything outside of that, I'm like, pfft. Found benevolence in like what? Oh, like somebody's birthday party and that and this and that oh. and, 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 and that it's yeah. me all that shit's just like i mean I, it's not like i'm not going to show up like a mean dude i love it i love experiencing things for people but that's just not what tickles my fancy in my life you know like like the fact that my relationship is connected to my mission and connected to her mission that yeah. that that makes it powerful yeah whereas like my other relationships <laughs> didn't even believe in the light work like, oh, I'll be spiritual, but I don't believe in the light work. I don't believe in, and never publicly have said the light work. It's because they never wanted the light work. Mm -hmm. They never believed in a mission. And then it's not spiritual. So, it? yeah. So, so to me, it's like, that's why I never got that hurt to where it was pain or suffering or let something that happened to me from some person ever fucking fuck me up. Mm. Like, it was always... Well, that's not on the mission. The things that always fuck me up in my life is when the mission becomes really hard. And I'm like, why did I fucking give too much energy out to people that I thought would want to do the work on the mission, but didn't want to. And I fucking shit. Okay. But even then I'm like, okay, that was a good lesson. Now I got to move on. So for me, like three swords has been weird because I've never really connected with it. Hmm. That's you interesting. Know? Cause like, I've never really dealt with that kind of like pain or suffering. 
I think it goes back to what we yeah. experienced as children. Because I know that <clears throat> what led me to this energy started when I was a very young kid. For some reason, and I could speculate all day on what the reason is, but for whatever reason under the sun, when I was a real young kid, I woke up one day and everybody hated me. I had no friends. I was bullied, picked on, made fun of by everybody. And that kept going my whole life. So I was, I, I, as a young kid, I was under the impression that I need people to like me. I need friends. I need somebody to love me. And mm -hmm. I thought that, that that's what I was lacking. I just desperately, desperately mm -hmm. wanted people to like me. I wanted friends. I wanted a woman to love me. And, and so, like, when I started getting into relationships, I'll never forget my first relationship when I was fucking 14. Good God, when she broke up with me, my poor little pee-picking 14-year-old heart was in pieces, dude. And, I, I mean, it fucked me up. It drove me crazy heartbreak because I was so convinced that I needed somebody to love me. And, and when somebody didn't love me, it just shattered my fucking world, you know? And, and, and it, it was a long drawn out extended process of, of lowering my frequency to the point to where I was, you know, obviously in my late twenties, I was ready to just, I hung myself, you know what I'm saying? Right. And, and that, that I think it probably has to do with what we were exposed to as kids, you know, cause I'm sure you were probably the popular guy, right? Uh, I mean, not, no, no, I'm not really actually. No, oh, really? I was, I was cool with all the groups. I was, I stayed in like, I'm cool with everyone. Right. Like I was in the nerd group. I was in the sports group. I was in the fucking, so I just was cool with everybody. But I think that going back to where you were referencing about, yeah, childhood, like I was lucky. My, 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 my family was fucking awesome. Of course, my parents divorced when I was 11 and 12. But then, like I've always said, then I got to see who they were as not parents, but as people. And then they were all cool with everything. Like my, my dad would bring his girlfriend over and my mom remarried right away. And so it was like, they would all be cool. So I never really did have any childhood shit, which so you, was you so know you, really weird. Like I, you know, so you, you you were never given that. I don't know how to word this, but it you never really felt like there was a void that you needed somebody to feel. You were, you were never codependent. Never, no, I, I never, I was, never yeah. had that. I never, but like you were bringing up like your first girlfriend. My first one, she only went out with me because she felt sorry for me because she liked me at like tw thirteen. And so we held hands for like three weeks, like mm -hmm. at reset or at like, you know, break the first break, seventh grade. And then like yeah. at lunch, we'd walk around and hold hands, you know, yeah. but she wouldn't like go make out or anything. And then she finally told me like, I only went out with you cause I felt sorry for you. And I thought that would be really crushing. But I, I just remember being like, and I got made fun of by my friends, you know, my friends were like, ha ha, like fucking that's so lame. And I'm like, yeah, it is. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to go ask this girl I think's hot for like years out to the dance. So I walked to her house, knocked on the door. Her dad answered. And I'm like, yeah, is she home? You want to go to the dance? No. So I just dealt with like a lot of rejection at first. But I remember I was in sports. Maybe it's because I was in sports my whole life since five years old that it was like I got it out through doing sports. But then when I finally had my girlfriend, I was the one who dissed the three of swords. Because once I had a girlfriend, I lost my virginity at 14. You know, it was like, I kind of like had that two years of like my, my neighbor across the street was my fucking girlfriend. So it was like, I could see her at school. She played water polo. Like we banged each other in practice in the water. I know that sounds gross, but fucking that's so like 15. You know, but I remember I fucking went on AOL and I met some chick. I was like, there's options. Yeah. And I was with my dad and I told him to drive me to the fucking Redondo beach. My dad lived in LA. I'm, I'm like, drive me to Redondo beach, fucking a uh, movie theater. And he did. And I hooked up with this other chick and I was like, damn, I just hooked up with this hot new chick from fucking Redondo. She's fucking dope. And I went to my locker and I broke up with my girlfriend right there. And I was like, I felt so free hmm. that I could finally like, I don't have to be trapped in some relationship because she lives across the street. I've known her since kindergarten. Da, 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 da. 
And that was a huge thing. And then I didn't even end up with that jig. I ended up with another girl who went to, I love all the Catholic school girls were my thing. So then I ended up with a chick in modern day and, and she lived in San Clemente and she was awesome, but I never had that. Yeah. Looking back at it, I'm like, like I've never got to a point to where I've like gone over the edge over the loss of a relationship hmm. romantically. Like I've always um, been like, Definitely been more of the three of swords dealer than the <laughs> receiver. Yeah. And my last relationship though, my, my divorce, she divorced me and that was my only time I ever been broken up with. And that was like a three of swords moment. And I remember though being like, well, there was just a lot of things on both of our end. Fuck. But also like, again, the spiritual differences, no, no, no belief in a like mission, light work mission. And then not like putting off that fake energy, like, Oh yeah, no, 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 like deleting everything and acting like, oh, I did this all myself. And I remember that, like I said in that one episode, I was like, oh shit. Why was that? I was like, if she's going to tell a lie to the whole world, fucking, why, why would I even be heartbroken over that? That's who I was dealing with. You know? So it comes for everybody in different ways though. Like I've been publicly humiliated on television. That's my thing. Like, you know, I, I, I had a, my heart was wide open in 2008 and a nine. I'm bringing astrology to the mainstream. I'm putting it out on television, on ABC. And then right away, as I'm two weeks from the show airing in 2010, I had to wait almost a year for it to come out because it was ABC. I'm fucking getting phone calls. Everybody's like, dude, they're talking shit on you and Jimmy Kimmel right now. I'm like what? I'm young too, by the way. This is fucking 2010. I'm like 25 going on 26 that year. Fucking go to fucking Channel 7, ABC, and fucking talking shit on me in astrology. And so right out the gate, my, that was my Three of Swords moment. Like, geez, this is going to be a hard fucking thing. The rejection of the mainstream, the rejection of people of astrology. How many, how many dinners, how many places, family, friends, or everybody is like, you're that astrologer? Can, making me the devil, making me that I'm crazy or schizophrenic because it's not scientific or it's not this. Those are the moments that have hit me the most. Hmm. Is rejection from the public as far, especially for astrology, knowing that it's a wholesome, divine, I don't even like to give it a <clears throat> name as far as like a divine science or divine art or whatever. It's fucking astrology. It's the fucking thing that has defined all of our lives for eternity and still will post this moment and that's where that's been the hard part how many even family members have just been like also christian and just been like i can't like they can't relate like well you know the scripture says duh, duh, duh. that shit's been my three swords that's funny because see i'm the opposite there like i've always been the type i enjoy that kind of energy like i enjoy rebelling against the mainstream and and that's pissing, where Aquarius Leo <laughs> and pissing people off and it, that makes me feel good like that would have made me feel good I mean like oh okay right cool I don't know that's weird that's fascinating it's interesting but when it comes to the three of swords energy I even remember I was nine years old and the prettiest girl in the whole grade man I had the biggest crush on her she called me ugly Dude, that was a knife to the heart. I was so self-conscious. All the way, it lasted all the way up into my 20s. That fucked me up so bad. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? Just, just the prettiest girl in the whole grade that I had the biggest crush on, and she called me ugly. Dude, that that ruined me as a nine-year-old kid, you know? And and but but at the same thing on on the other side of it, to be like, if people were talking shit about me, like the mainstream media, the news, and people being like, oh, you're into this. Like, yeah, I am. I'll, I'll, I'll wear a fucking satanic cross or a satanic upside down cross and a satanic pentagram, you know, just to just to piss the public off. I was always, I would always get off on that kind of energy. It's, it's weird, man. I don't know. It's like that mirror yeah. image Leo Aquarius, you know? That's what I was going to say. <laughs> like Leo's, yeah, like you would think Leo's get all fucked up about love, but, you know, it's like we're kind of more like, all right. You know, let me let me show you that I'm not gonna like 
cry over you and move on. Well, I heard you know? I heard this one chick, and I forget who it was years ago, was talking about Leo Aquarius, and they said if you if you look at it, Leos are seem to be addicted to positive attention, and Aquarians seem to be addicted to negative attention. And I was like, bitch. <laughs> 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 because it does like I used to get high on pissing people off and and stirring the pot and and making everybody angry and and for some reason it would just it would make me feel good you know I was like I was like dude she might have something there she might be onto something you know well, no and I when I look at the last three years especially on this YouTube or our high vibe like and I it, it was it was just even last night I was looking at eleven thousand eight hundred churned high vibers right. I was just telling you, I'm going to have to write an email to them all and try to get them back. But to see 11,800 people who left because I did shattered reality and I spoke out against, against the vax, that, that's a three swords moment that still hurts me. Because it's like, what people forget about the vaccine situation was like, one, I was doing it from astrology before it came out, predicted it. So people were cool with that. But once it got out by December and I did chat of reality, people freaked out because then it started to become, if you don't get it, then you're not going to be part of society or you can't have a job. And then it became this whole campaign against the unvaccinated. And I was like, I'm not fucking, this is not good. And so, you know, people got pissed at me because I, that's where I went into an Aquarian moment where I'm like, fuck all you, like you're, you're, you're by you getting it, you're, giving the beast its power against human beings right now. And so I, that, that's a three sword moment that I'll admit not been, I would say that I'm like 70, no, even more. I'm like 95% healed. There's a 5% of me in my heart that still feels a sword in there. That's like, I fucking didn't do it to piss you all off. I did it to fucking, <laughs> because I, you could ask Sophia, the second we got to Vegas, people came up to me and said, you saved my life. And that's been the one thing I've heard the most when I'm in the, like, whether it's messages or in person in the tens of thousands of people who've wrote me or told me in person, you have, you saved my life and my family's life. You saved my life. Uh, it's, like, it's like the fact that so many people hate me because of me just speaking the truth, that fucking hurts more than a breakup. Yeah. But you know, you, you know planted I mean? a seed in their mind. You know, oh, yeah, but still. how many, dude, I guarantee you, I'd be willing to bet almost anything that of those 11,000 people, probably at 832, least 11,832, at least eight to 9,000 of them are probably now thinking, oh shit, he was right. I'm a dumbass. Guarantee it. Planted a seed. And if, and if it hasn't bloomed yet, it's going to. So the question is, are they going to swallow their pride and come back? You know, because I think that's when it comes to this whole spiritual war that that has been going on, the, the, the it seems like the people who are are sucked into the matrix and brainwashed it for them. It's a battle of egos. Who's right and who's wrong. So people get ashamed. One of the things that I've been noticing is that whenever the truth does come out, the people who fought against you, what they do is they tuck their tail and lower their head and go hide in shame. Because they think we're going to say, ha, 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 I told you so. It's like, no, dude. This isn't a battle of egos. It's not a battle of me being right. It's a battle of me wanting to save your fucking life. It's a battle of wanting to save humanity. Okay? I'm not, I'm not going to shame you. Cool. As long as you acknowledge it now. Come on. Welcome. Come over to the light side, you know? I just think they're afraid because that's what they would do to us. You know, if the truth came out in their favor, they would laugh at us and say, ha, 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 I told you so. So they assume that's what we're going to do to them. So you can think about it like that. I guarantee you, bet you anything, the overwhelming majority of those people feel really stupid and embarrassed right now. Bet you. I, I, I really don't think so. I, and then maybe that's where my three of swords issue is. Like there's plenty of reddits on me, you know, like, I feel like you've made it in the world when you're on Reddit, mm -hmm. you know? You look up the Leo King and Reddit, you go into spiritual communities, you go to astrology communities, you say my name, uh-oh, it's going to be negative. And, and it was like, how did my pure good intentions get twisted the wrong way? That's something I still have to look at every day, you know? And all of it because of a fucking 
vaccine. It's so stupid. Like that, that's the thing that blows my mind. Like, like people left because they, they were upset that I just said experiments gone bad. I predicted the whole thing that don't follow getting coerced. And for years I said, they're going to try and coerce you into forcing you to do something, forcing everybody else to get something. Don't do it. That's before. And I said, it's going to be based off a plague. It's going to be based off a new kind of plague that never has been all of it. Everybody knows. Fucking, but I, you know, I think last night when I'm like, I can't believe, like, I just, yeah, that, that's, that's my three of swords. Like, my heart still hurts when I'm like, this isn't 11,800 followers on like social media. This is 11,800 high vibe members that left. Yeah, but I mean, you think from like the that universe- is that that's caused to where it's like this place, as I told you, like, whatever I, had, I have to sell, whatever I have left, sold every bit of crypto. To where it's at that point to where it's like, did truth really cost that much to lose everything? And if it is, it is. And Sophia's willing to accept that cost with me. And that's the hardest fucking three sword shit. That to me is real three sword shit. Yeah. I mean, in situations like that, it's very important, very important in situations like that to pop away from the earthly matrix because it's really easy to get caught in that and pop away and look at the big ripple that you're making in humanity the real light work that seed you planted right you know what i'm saying and 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 yeah again one thing that i always go back to is maintain connection to that future version of yourself maintain that future version of yourself hold on to it stay connected to it and while you're connected to that future version of yourself, you look back on the you now and you're telling this as part of your success story. In the future, two years from now, five years from now, I'm going to be so much more successful and I'm going to be telling this as part of the story. Just I'm just telling about how, yeah, at one point in time, I lost 11,000 high vibers, whatever. And then because that happened, this was able to happen. And then you, 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 you reverse Reverse, not reverse manifest. What's the word? Reverse engineer your timeline. You work backwards. So that's how, that's when it goes back to you're the only being in the whole universe who is allowed to assign a meaning to the things that happen to you in your life. So that happening, most people give it a negative meaning. This is a bad thing. This is a horrible thing that happened. And, and if you can maintain that trust that, no, actually, this is a good thing. This is, this is going to happen in a good way somehow. Don't try to figure out how. It'll drive you nuts. You'll never sleep. You'll never figure out how the universe is going to do it. Just always stay connected to the future. Picture yourself five years from now doing so much more better than you're doing right now, and that's just part of the story. You see what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, it totally does. It's just, again, like it's I hard. think we said at the beginning of this, it's hard. It's hard, yeah. It's fucking hard. I was like... Because no matter what, it's just like, oh, fuck. Like, uh, that's just like a pill that I just have swallowed that just. Oh. But there's not much. But I mean, it, yeah, it, there's not much more that you could do except learning how to accept it. You know, I. If, uh, I mean, think, you, I mean, you know got to think I mean? about it. Because like, look, look, it, with all the people who are really fighting the spiritual war. It's almost like, and this is going to sound kind of fucked up, but in a way, in the truth community, I'm, and this is going to sound so fucked up. (laughs) Just, just hear me out for a minute. In a way, in the truth community, it's actually kind of little of a little bit embarrassing that I haven't been banned off YouTube yet. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because the people who are out there on the front lines telling the truth, you know, fighting that war, fighting the good side. They've been, the, the dark side banned them. And well, then, I mean, I have a thing, a theory about that. I actually feel anybody who's been banned isn't really good because I have said every fucking thing. People know this channel should be the most banned channel on YouTube. They've never been banned. And every story you hear about somebody banned, there's always some dark shadow shit behind them. Hmm. Like, 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 look at Alex Jones, right? I like him. But obviously, I mean, 
there's some weird shadow shit going on in his life. Everybody who's looking at Andrew Tate, some weird well, shadow yeah. shit, right? Like, but that's yeah, how I yeah, look yeah. at it. Like anybody who's like, uh, I've been banned and I got big and I pushed all these truth things. Were they really <laughs> doing it from their true heart? Because if it was truth, then it wouldn't be banned. You know what I mean? Like, like that, and like that. People know, especially like I have whole series on the shot, like you know that uh, how bad it was all through twenty 2020 twenty and twenty twenty one and twenty twenty two, and like nonstop. You know what I mean? Like people know. Yeah. Like I've 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 literally said the most craziest shit people have ever even heard about it. So it, it's like when, I, but I never got banned. I never got any video taken down. And I'm like, huh. So anytime somebody gets banned, I always go There's some shadow shit there. Hmm. Something. That's the light work not really wanting that version of that truth message coming out because there's something not true about it. Well, I mean, we, we either way, regardless, we still have to maintain that acknowledgement that this is a spiritual war, you know. So, in a in a weird way, <clears throat> uh, now that's interesting. I'll I'll play with that thought and ponder that. But but for the moment, it's in a way you you have to sit and think. If somebody is is fighting the good fight and right now in these times they stay on top, I would almost be wondering what are you doing wrong? At least you'll probably be shadow banned or something, right? I mean, I've been that. I mean, I literally have shown people like they wouldn't let me do lives. They wouldn't let me do. They, they would literally say like your account fucking is dead. Yeah. Da, and then people couldn't even... <clears throat> see my stories you know mm, like yeah, and then yeah, yeah. all like all that shit happened but i still what my whole point was that i still was able to get through it all if that makes sense like yeah. i was still able to keep pushing the message and i don't know i just feel like i don't know like yeah like that's why i think for me like relationship situations breakups eh, not that big a deal to me the mission having people fucking take my genuine heart and rip it to shreds and be like, fuck high vibe, fuck the Leo King, fuck. And then, and then for me again, it's yeah. Like people put all, all the stories and they're not even like bad stories. They're just like really weird stories. People make up about me out there on the internet and shit. I'm just like, Whoa, <clears throat> just cause I was authentic or true to myself or he cusses a lot or all the stories, you know, there's stories where people have them up on Reddit and they're like, yeah, he's going down in 2020 and he's going down and he's going down and he's fucking blah, 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 whatever. I'm just like, wow. Just like take the fucking, I don't know. That's where I think that, that you have to like push through yeah. and realize it doesn't matter where you're coming from in life. To me, I feel like it's wussy though, if it's from a relationship situation, because at the real extremes, I feel like a three of swords is like, you're putting out your divine spiritual light working heart and there's going to be shit that's going to try and take you down and that's where you have to fucking take that and like life is going to bitch slap you i'm not going to try and steal fucking from rocky or anything here <laughs> but that's actually what rocky says is like you know life is going to bitch slap you and it's about how you fucking take life on and get back up and fucking take that punch from life because life is going to punch the shit out of you hmm. that's you know? interesting maybe, maybe yeah that's that's a uh a fascinating dynamic there because I am the exact opposite. The only thing I worry about is that I can provide for my family. I don't give two shits who's saying what about me. I don't care. Like, like a couple of weeks ago, I put a video on Instagram, lost like 500 followers. I don't give a fuck. You know, people get mad at me all the time and unsubscribe. Fuck Rich Lop, he's such an asshole. I don't care. But I do care about being able to provide for my family, you know, but as far as the public's opinion of me, I don't care. Like to me, the way I look at it is I have a mission and I'm here doing that mission. And, and yeah, that's, that's going to happen. That, that means that I'm fighting the battle. If the dark is attacking me, that means I'm doing something right. That's the way I look at it. I, I agree with you. I think though that when it comes to the um, extra it takes for me to provide for my family to create a network and all that shit 11,832 yeah. people gone um, makes it to where the risk is so high that 
Like if I were to just do this out of my house, it'd be no big deal. But yeah. <sighs> how many employees I've paid and how many, oh, like all of it. Like I just, yeah, it's just like, ugh. it's not, it's nauseating. Most, most people go, why don't you go to bed early? It's like, I don't have an option. <laughs> it takes that much to get through. Yeah. To hold up this place. So we still got big stuff coming. I know. I just, you know. Got big stuff coming. Next year is going to be a big year. The year of the yeah. dragon, man. Yeah, I don't know if you noticed it. Or I not. know. I mean, I, you're talking to astrologer. I'm a fucking yeah. rat. Bro. I'm rock, dude. I rock the dragon. I got the dragon on my fucking Zippo. The dragon on my ring. The dragon. I'm the year of the dragon. I got a dragon tattooed on my arm. With 1988, next year is going to be a big fucking year. It's going to be crazy. I I'm, know. I'm it's, a little it's, scared. It's but. a year, good year for the rat too. Yeah. I, mean, I look like a fucking rat. So it works <laughs> out. You know what I mean? I don't need a tattoo. I look like one. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a big one. So, and I, man, I tell you, like, I, I went into this year knowing this year is gonna be challenging. I had to tell Leah at the beginning of the year, I was like, this year is gonna suck. And she didn't take me seriously when we were moving and everything was all fucked up. And, and because we, we spent three years fucking chilling, happy, no problems, just comfort. For the first time in my adult life, I experienced comfort and happiness in Vegas. Fucking on cloud nine. Transitioning over to here, <clears throat> I told her, 2023 is going to suck. I told her that. I was like, just be prepared for that. And she didn't take me seriously. So about three to six months into it, she's like, oh my God, did we make the wrong decision? I said, no, no, this year is going to be hard. That always happens before you level up. Right. Always. You never level up without being tested or without going through some shitty shit first. That's how you know something big's about to come. Right. So that's what I always default to every time, you know, I start getting irritated at what's going on and, you know, business is slowing down or whatever, whatever I'm upset about. I'm like, nah, man, next year, next year's going to blow this shit out of the water. And I already knew. So. I agree with you. I feel like that that's the main message with the three swords is like, Leveling up is going to come with some fucking uncomfortable moments. I think Three of Swords is uncomfortable mm -hmm. more than it is devastating. Yeah. I think Tower is devastating. Like that's yeah. devastation. But I would say that the Three of Swords is the minor of the Tower card, you know? Like I feel like that that's the card that, you know, it's like <clears throat> most people don't want to see the Tower or the Three of Swords. Like that's like, ooh. But, yeah. but I feel like those are also both leveling up. Like you think at the tower card that you've reached the highest place. It's like, no, you haven't. Yeah. Same thing with three of swords. Like, oh, you might've been the most comfortable or like how I was describing, you know, that 11,832 people definitely made it to where not so much that it was comfortable as much as it was more comfortable to keep adding employees here, right? Four employees on payroll at a time in 2020 and 2021. Now I have zero. Like, now it's like, oh shit. Now it's like, oh God, well, you know, what, what do I have left to sell? And then and all the crypto I acquired and made money on, and then I sold all that I'd fucking, to make it through last week. And then now I'm like, okay, what else do we got to sell? It's a transitionary phase, I'm dude. at that place. It's like, I just am selling whatever I can sell. It's going to make sense later. You know, so. It's a transitionary phase because, you know, the trajectory that you're about to take is, is going to be so wild that, you know, you have to go through this. That's just, and I know it sucks. It's hard as fuck to be able to pop away and just say, you know what? It's cool. And here again, here's one thing that always helps me through fucking shit like this. I sit and say to myself, okay, well, if the worst case scenario happens, I'm cool with it. And for, there's a weird, this weird thing happens in your mind. If you can find that, if you can really find that place and being totally okay with the worst case scenario, you you loosen your grip on that timeline and stop thinking about it. We're so wired to grab onto and clinch onto what we fear. So so this is one of the ways that we reverse manifest so much shit in our life. And this is why they say you attract what you fear, what you're doing, whatever you fear, you're grabbing onto that timeline and you're holding onto it and you're pumping energy into it. And and when you find that place of, you know what, I'm cool. I'm cool if that happens. If it crashes and burns, all right, it is what it is. I'm good with it. And then this, if you really, really find that place of acceptance, you let loose of that timeline. 
and you'll bypass yeah. it every fucking time. Because you know, I'm thinking yeah. about it. I'm, it's cool. It's it's whatever. Does that make sense? I mean, yeah, and I and I've applied that, but for some reason, there's something about this moment for me that's well, it's hard, yeah. But the way the world is, yeah, it's uh, it's a scary uh, thought. <laughs> uh, like they don't make it easy for running an operation and trying to help people anymore. Yeah. They don't. And it's tricky. And and that I think that the deeper part of the timeline isn't so much like a tower. Like I'm willing to accept if I lose it all and already being a Leo, being humbled, having to come back would be hard. But I think that the hardest timeline would be that I'm looking at is like, Maybe I had my peak because I got into this so early. And now there's TikTokers screaming about who's the right astrologers and they don't even include me in the combo anymore. I'm backing up other astrologers, but they don't even think of me anymore because I'm so old into it now. They've been around for so long, showed the way to so many that it's like you get forgotten. That's like, is this my transition out to something, uh, something else? That, that's like the timeline I'm having to let go of. I was like, well, I guess fucking popped off. You know, like I watched Sylvester Stallone's um, documentary this weekend. And I related with his a lot. Like, you know, it's not like he's going to make another Rambo or another Rocky. You know, it's not like the world is even into those kind of characters anymore. I just don't think the world's vibing with a Leo and a Pluto Aquarius time coming up. And yeah. <clears throat> well, with where we're so, headed collectively, it's not going to matter. I mean, the whole system of career and finance is completely changing. So, and it is probably going to be a rough transition for us too, because we're all so accustomed to having to work in some way in exchange for money. And, and we're moving to a world where the whole, the, the whole financial system is changing. 10 years from now, money will be so ubiquitous it won't be something that you need. It won't be something, and of course, this is going to come with a lot of re-education too, but in the next 10 years, you'll be able to run this operation just because you want to. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it's the world that we're moving into is going to be very, very different. It's not really 10 years from now, it won't matter if that makes any sense. That's the, the weird part about the, the transition we're about to go through. And, and I don't know, man. I don't think it's peaked. I think you still got another peak coming. Uh, yeah, and I believe in life. That, I mean, like the waves keep having their sets that come in. But but yeah, I just feel like when when you've done it this long, and then where it's at now, I don't know. It just kind of doesn't feel like. Unless you really jump on to being a TikToker, <laughs> which which I don't resonate with, I don't either. Like 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 it's it's not like oh just do whatever you got to do to stay alive. It's like well, that that's like saying what kill somebody. No, to me that to me becoming a TikToker is the same as killing somebody. <laughs> that it just feels so disrespectful to our country disrespectful to people and it feels very out of alignment with the work fully now that doesn't mean that i'm talking shit on people who do it with that because if it resonates with them it does but for me especially as an american and knowing what that system is doing from china to americans and what it's doing to the world and what it's creating crazy theories and crazy um, things that are killing people today. 
I just don't, yeah, there's something about it. It feels <clears throat> like it steals the light more than it keeps the light. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I can't really uh, vibe with it. I can't. I mean, I've, I've tried it a few times. I put some videos on there and it just doesn't, doesn't do it for me. Kind of like Instagram. That's another one that I just, if it crashed, I don't care, you know? So, right. Yeah, it doesn't, I don't know what, what <clears throat> timeline that aspect of our daily life is going to unfold. What kind of ripple that's putting in the pond, you know, the whole TikTok thing and it's collectively where that's taking us. I, I don't know. I don't know, but... I don't know. It's going to get worse before it gets better. Yeah. We're, we're going to go through a near-death experience, collectively, especially America. Yeah, and I mean, I, I think to kind of put the finishing touch on this, like after seeing that exposing twin flames, like I know those people were crazy, but the fact that that show at the same time took two people who really weren't doing the work but took essence parts of the work that's true and has now turned political figures the whole mass media anybody that has a voice to make a video about it to look at spirituality as negative or cult like we have to all be very fucking aware of that yeah to me, that was a three of swords because it was like, uh, it's not going to be easy. No, I mean, but the, mm -hmm. again, that, that goes back to this is a spiritual war. I know. This is a spiritual war. That means the light and the dark are battling. That's why with this show, my goal is for this show to somehow go mainstream one day. That's my goal. I don't, right. I don't know where you're at with it, but that's, no, I, that's I, my I, hope with this show is that, that somehow this, this ends up making it to the mainstream somehow. And I'd be fucking... It already is mainstream. It already gets millions of views on Facebook. It already fucking... That's the irony. Yeah. Well, I'm... You know I mean? Shit, I'm more than willing to stand up and debate and fight against that, you know? The, the people who are trying to attack spirituality because again it, it it they're hoping that they're going up against people who have nothing but woo woo as their right. argument you know so it's easy to attack those people it's nothing but woo woo twin flame woo woo no i'm bridging the gap between science and mysticism and i'm not the only one doing it i mean shit i'm probably one of the last ones that started doing it there's a few of us there's a little handful of us Dr. Joe Dispenza, fucking Billy Carson, Eben Alexander, you know. So, so I will gladly stand up and fight that fight. Bridging the gap between science and mysticism. This shit can be explained scientifically. It's not woo-woo. And that kind of shit, that Twin Flames universe horse shit, has nothing to do with the spiritual community. That is not spiritual at all, you no, know. I, I agree. So I'm not afraid to fight that fight. <laughs> oh, and I'm not saying I'm afraid. I just, you know, I'm more. And I've dealt with all the attacks be before people even. When the iPhone was coming out, I was being attacked in the media for being an astrologer. So I'm pretty used to it. Just I, I, I guess I know the gauge of how gnarly it is more than most. And it's. And that's why it takes an operation like this and the protections and to make it like this, because even just, I don't know if you know, but on November 15th, the FCC is in control of the internet. Now the vote went through. So we're dealing with the world where we can't even see it right now that the internet is no longer under the freedom that it was meant to always be under when it was created, that we don't know what in one day, like tomorrow, I'm not saying tomorrow, but like it could be like tomorrow to where the FCC shifts the way that everything works on the internet. And, you know, Hive would be fine because I do all the shit with all the apps to be able to be its own thing. But social media, that's, that's what FCC is coming after because FCC is dealing with television and they're treating the internet like television. Yeah. So unless you follow those rules and how to 
broadcast correctly under FCC rules. Woo. That that's you know, and that's and then I think they threw up that show at the right moment to prep people for that. Like you just can't go sell an online course anymore. Stuff like that. Because when the FCC's in control, it's pretty crazy. And the same thing's happening in Canada, too. It's like really weird how Canada put it out, put their warnings out, and then now America's doing it. So it's like... Now, for me, I'm not scared because I, I know that world very well. I, I know what to do with it. That's why I built this place. But I think my 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 heart to the world and the people out there on the internet only i fear for them because that's it already happened it just went down but we haven't seen what they're doing yet with it so uh, that's a whole different ball game it's like telling people who play baseball in their backyard that you can't anymore and you have to play through the main field. They only take so many people in the main field. That's the best analogy I can use. Like, what do you mean? Like I can't play in my backyard anymore. Like, nope, sorry. <clears throat> that space is unavailable. So people should look into it because that's what's happening as we're speaking right now. You know, this, this is where being connected to your higher self and being connected to the divine is so important because through times like this, you know, if you maintain that connection, you'll be guided through. Yeah. You'll be put in the right place where you need to be. Yeah. The universe will pick you up and carry you to where you need to be. And we're about to go into that phase where if you're not tuned in, you're fucked. If you're tuned uh -huh. in, it, I'm not saying nothing crazy will happen. I'm not saying nothing bad, nothing scary will happen. But if you <clears throat> know how to follow that intuitive nudge, go here and do this thing. Stop. Don't do that no more. Go do this thing. And you learn, you learn how to, you're guided. We're guided. We got fucking guides, me and you. I guarantee you this whole damn building is guides crowded all around us. You know what I'm saying? And I trust that, that feeling when I'm told, go do this. I've learned to trust it, you know? So going through this crazy ass shit next year, I just, I just trust that no matter what happens, I'm being divinely guided through it, you right. know? So yeah, and I think that's the best counter to the Three of Swords, what you just said. You know, I don't feel like guides or angelic guides, or you want to look at him, or using their swords to go after our hearts uh, and puncture them. But I think that we puncture the hearts of our guides and our angels and God more than we realize by not trusting that divine route, you know? So... I think that's kind of the lesson is like maybe our, in, our stuff that's so insignificant creates a backlash to the divine partners we have in the universe and likes to throw shade on them instead of looking at it the other way. And I would say that's how the dark works. Trying to find a way for you to disconnect from the divine or disconnect from God. And put that sword into the heart of God or put that sword into the heart of your guides, or your angels over your trivial, you know, issues that DoorDash wasn't on time. <laughs> yeah, they're going to try everything that they can. Good. Luckily for me, though, it's, it's really hard to scare me because I've been there, done that. I've been to rock bottom. So if they try to scare me into thinking they're going to send me right back to rock bottom. I, I don't know. It just, I, I don't know. A lot of us who have gone through some of the roughest things you can go through are more, maybe that's another reason why volunteers have such a rough life, you know, because coming up into these times, we had to go through certain shit where your average person, you know, if you're threatened, you're going to lose your job. If you don't take this damn shot, shit, if, if, if I, back in the day I was waiting for if you want to remain in the YouTube partner program, you must show vaccination status. Bye-bye. Right. Later. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was ready for it. I, right. Because, you know, that's that's what they get you with. This isn't a war. I know. I got kicked out of the military. 
<laughs> this isn't a war with bombs and bullets and, you know, grenades and missiles. This is a war with your consciousness. Yeah. You know, and, and again, I still hold the firm belief that the light has the upper hand. Now, that doesn't mean that nobody's going to die. But in this war, the only way you're going to die is if you consent to it. The only people who are going to lose their life in this war are the people who walk to the slaughterhouse because they're manipulated. They're, they're shamed. You know, they're, they're guilt tripped or they're scared. You know, they're threatened. You know, you better do this or this is going to happen. And only the people who stand up and say, no, nah, fuck you, do it then. I don't care. Those are the people who will make it through. The people who, oh my God, no, no, please don't. Please don't do this. Please don't cancel me. Please don't talk shit about me. Please don't make everybody think that I'm a homophobic bigot and a racist. Uh, please don't, don't, please don't. You know, those people will walk straight into the slaughterhouse because they're afraid. You know, that's the kind of war that we're fighting. It's a war over your consciousness. So... Yeah, and, and and turning against people. Yeah, on, on, and that's that's what that's been hard for me to watch. Uh, and and I feel like right now we're just watching the same tactics being used again, and feel sorry for her side, and go after these people. Like, it's not cool. You know. So it. Like I uh, said my two cents about that. Three swords. Guess it's an end kind of three swords ish. <laughs> it's definitely not a card of um extreme like buying into the neuroticism of your own self. I think I think it's a card of true humbling. I don't think it, it sometimes it might make you feel like you're at your knees, but then you get up and go, what am I doing on my knees here? You know. But yeah. That was a good one. But uh make sure you check Rich and I out. Rich Lop, he's down below on this video. I hope you all have a good Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah, man. It's going to be a good one. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. I know. This is the first one with my daughter and 20-plus people. It's going to be cool. All family coming over. Yeah. So me and I are hosting, so. My favorite time of year, man. Yep. It's like the highest vibe time of the year for this, for the matrix that we live in. If there was ever a time that the matrix is high vibration, well, it's around the holidays, you know? You yeah, know? and I think you have to let your... Like, I, I think Three of Swords would be, like, worrying about everything on the holiday. You know, like, I already am planning, like, yeah, I'm fucking going to be worried about the business. But I have to turn that shit off to enjoy the moment of the holiday and being with family and not put that energy on other people. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? So my, my goal was just to make sure that when my kids, when my daughter... Well, both my kids, rather, but my daughter that lives with me now. My goal is that when she's 30, I want her to look back and say, man, the holidays were awesome when I was a kid. Yeah. Because that's me. That's the reason why you see me posting Christmas shit on Facebook. And I got my whole studio yeah. decked out in Christmas shit. Because the reason why has nothing to do with Christianity. It has nothing to do with religion. It's because... Well, I mean, that's what's funny is it's paganistic. Yeah, yeah. Christmas tree well, and, and it didn't even anything to do with that. It's very, very simple. It's because, you know... When I think back on my childhood, the happiest fucking times was Christmas in the 90s. In the 90s, man, when, when all the Christmas movies were on, you go into the store, you see all the Christmas shit, you hear the Christmas songs playing, and it was just, those were the happiest times of my childhood. So now, in my 30s, as a grown-ass man, when it's Christmas time and they break out the Christmas decorations, it takes me back to the 90s when I was, like, happy as fuck. And I'm thinking, dude, for me... The holidays were amazing when I was a kid. I want to give that same thing to my kids, you know? So that's, that's the that's way the I look at it. That's the best way to be. Yeah. And I, I want to do the same. Aurora is her first one, and she's very cognitive and aware of what's going on. Yeah, I saw on. her sitting up on the couch. Yeah. 
<laughs> He's just sitting on the couch. I was putting up the tree last night or Saturday night, and there she is. Or that was last night. Yeah. You know? So it's like, and it was weird because it was a year ago. Sophia and I were putting up that tree, like envisioning, like we knew it was right after we found out Sophia was pregnant and we were envisioning Aurora to be here for the holidays. And here it is a year later. And here she is. And it was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. It's funny because like when I do the show or I do my work and I'm here at the studio and I do it, like it's like, it's like, yeah, it's like my, my, whatever I'm going through, whatever comes out. But when I'm at home and I'm with my daughter and with Sophia, it's like, man, I'm in a different world. Like, you know I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I don't put that energy in home. I have a big separation from home and work. Yeah. And, uh, but when I'm at work, like that's where I let, you know, it's not easy <laughs> out. Get so. it, man. All right, everyone. We'll definitely check us out. Hope you all have a great Thanksgiving. And if you're in Europe or anywhere else, I hope you enjoy your Thursday. Make it the best day. And we'll see you all uh, on the next one. We're all blessed to have you. We'll see you again soon. Adios.